beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Hallelujah. Okay. I'd like us to read verse 7. Everyone. It was the same Job speaking. Hmm. Listen, listen. Let me tell you something powerful about, about, look at me. Do you know there is a technology that God has put in man? Every time, this is how it works. At first, we are always afraid. There are things we are afraid of. Are you getting my point? There is a way you interact with your fears such that you no longer fear again. So what would have made you cry yesterday, you will sit in the midst of it. And after challenging God and yelling at heaven, right at that point, a song of hope will arise. Sometimes the best way for God to bring us to a place of strength and victory is to expose us to our fears so that there is nothing else to fear. Hallelujah. Have you seen a man who has had accident and survived? When you shout and say an arm robber is coming, he will still be moving. Lord, you are so good. You are worthy of all my praise. While everybody is panicking, he just says, man, I've seen too much. If he's dead, I would have died. Are you getting my point? There are men who have cheated the devil with their testimonies. They've gone through too much. When the ministry started, there are certain things that we would have to be careful about. But right now, ah, there are things you go through in life, you no longer get afraid. Remember when some of you were afraid of carryover? In the name of Jesus, I bind. It will never happen. And you went to the board. You saw it once. You saw it twice. The third time, you just said, Lord, you are faithful. Now you just come and check. What's the CGPA? 2.87. I give you all the glory. And you are comforting somebody who said it dropped from 3.5 to 3.4. And you are saying, may God bless you. Take it easy. Say, can you imagine? God, why did you do this? And you're watching. A time comes when you've gone through too much pain. Your pain suddenly becomes a weapon. It no longer becomes a thing of embarrassment. You look down and it becomes your weapon of victory. And Job in chapter 6 made a statement. He said, I'm dying. What is all this? Heaven was silent. He went through the pain after insulting God, I'm sure he told himself, I'm sorry. Told his wife, I'm sorry. And said, look. And then he said this. Hallelujah. He said, for there is hope for a tree. Who is God speaking to tonight? There is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that's the part I like. 
He didn't say if it be rooted out. He said if it be cut down. Because the root is still there. The miracle is not in what you have lost. It's in what you have left. He said there is hope for a tree. God is speaking a powerful message to someone tonight. No matter what you have lost, God is the reason why you did not lose everything. Mm. You lost your first class status, but you are still a student. You lost your family members, but you are still alive. They amputated one leg, but you are still breathing. He said there is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that it will what? It will sprout again. Ha! The Bible says, rejoice not over me, my enemies. He said, for when I fall, when you are about to sit together and make a funeral, you will see me arise again. He said, rejoice not over me. They that have laughed at my family, they that have looked at them and said, at 31, nobody has gone to school. He said, rejoice not. There is hope for a tree. That there are expectations that you have and now is November. The admission list came out and your name was not there. Yet in a dream, you kept seeing that you got the admission. He said there is hope for a tree. The tragedy is that the tree can be cut down but not rooted out. He said, and that the tender branch thereof will not see. Everybody say there is hope. What is hope? Let's define hope very quickly. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new. And I will follow you forward. That's what the Lord is doing in someone's life and someone's family tonight. You make all things new, yes, you make all things new, and I will follow you forward. One more time, let's sing it as a prophecy for our lives and destinies. Come on now. You make all things new, yes. Definition number one. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. First definition. Let's hurry up. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a thing to happen. In other words, is that feeling, that expectancy you have that there's something I expect to happen in my life. And so you keep that fire. You keep that expectation. It's called hope. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. Number two. Hope is a firm assurance. A firm assurance and a belief that things and circumstances will be better in the future. I'll take it again. Hope is a firm assurance and a belief that things and circumstances will be better in the future. Powerful definition. The assurance, firm assurance. So in the first definition, we see that hope is expectation. The second definition, faith is firm assurance. The certainty that you know that it will not end like this. Although for now, things may be unclear. Although for now, things may be unknown. But you have an assurance. I don't know how it will happen. I don't know when it will happen. But I know it will happen. The firm assurance. Number three. I'll give you three definitions. 
Number three, hope is an optimistic attitude. Optimistic attitude of mind. An optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation. Keep writing. It's an optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes. Based on an expectation of positive outcomes related to events and circumstances in one's life or the world at large. An optimistic attitude of mind based on an expectation of positive outcomes related to events and circumstances in one's life. Now, there are some key words that I want us to look at. When you talk about hope, the first thing you talk about is expectation. Say expectation. So, I expect that certain things will happen. I may not know how they will happen. I may not know when they will happen. I don't even know where they will happen. But I know that they will happen. Number two, firm assurance. That certainty. That I know, that I know, that I know. That although it's been seven years and we've not been able to have a child, we know that we are going to die as parents. I know against all odds, against all medical reports, that I know, that I know, that I know, that I may be SS now, but one thing I know is that when I'll be going to be with the Lord, that genotype must change. I may not know which miracle service will bring the miracle, but I have a firm assurance. And then number three is an attitude of optimism. I keep my spirit high because I know that things will change. I may not see it. It may not look like it as at now. The job has not come. I've been a graduate for 10 years, no job. I've been a man of God for 20 years and there are just 20 members and I love God sincerely. The ministry is not growing. Finance is not coming. Influence is not increasing. Nothing is happening. Hallelujah. I'm a lady. I've kept myself and I love the Lord. I told God I wanted to marry at 23. I'm 33. It's 10 years of waiting. Nothing has happened. He said, it's an attitude of optimism. Keeping your spirit high. Knowing you are not wasting your time. Very important. Why do we need hope? Very quickly. Why do we need hope? Why do we need to talk about the subject of hope? Why do we really need hope? Is it so important a subject to be talked about? Number one. I wrote here that in a world full of uncertainties, failures, and darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. In a world full of uncertainties, failures, and darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. So the first reason why we need hope is because it supplies for us the strength it gives us the staying power, the impetus to keep going, even when there is no human reason to keep moving. Hallelujah. Why should I keep serving the Lord when there are all kinds of things happening? Why should I keep hoping on God when believers seem to be dying around like chickens in our nation? Why should I keep being optimistic when it's been years and decades, there's not been any graduates in our family. In a world that is full of uncertainties. Hallelujah. Uncertainties. For instance, the, the, doc, the, the death of Dr. Miles Munro raised a lot of questions around people. You know, because people knew how very confident he was about the principles of the kingdom. 
Hallelujah. One of our brothers in the technical department called me this evening to tell me he lost his brother. He just got a report that he lost his brother. Our sister in the media last week, Selena, lost her mom. And the mom was coming from the church. She finished service on her way to go home and a bike carried her. She had an accident, had sustained some internal injuries and um, by the next day, she gave up. And while she died, they were praying. I've seen a lot of people who minutes before people died, they were praying in tongues. In fact, some who died, died speaking in tongues or praying. Uncertainties. There are times when no matter how theologically sound you are, you will be faced with realities that you may not be able to answer people. Why is this happening? Hallelujah. Imagine that that celebrity called Jesus. Imagine a man who conquered death. Will you ever think that he would die? After bringing dead people back to life. You would think even if they wanted to kill him. It was based on that. That Peter took a knife to cut Malchus' ear. Because he said you don't know who you are trying. And Jesus now gave himself. And he said Jesus. I don't understand. What is going on here? Somebody tell me I'm dreaming. What is Jesus doing? Wake up. Are you sleeping? You are handing yourself, donating yourself to be killed. And Jesus said exactly that. And Peter said, come on now. So you fooled us all this while. Where is the jazz you've been using? So you are not really mighty. Ah, I knew it. Something in my spirit told me there was more to this man. And he ran away. But he did not know that there is hope for a tree. The Bible likens men to trees. He said, he shall be like a tree. So he said, there is hope for a tree. Jesus died, but he died for only 72 hours. When men were busy discussing his death, he was already alive. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't talk about my death when I'm already alive. We love talking about death. Two men in Emmaus were discussing the death, whereas the expiry time was only 72 hours. Did you know that this phase of your life that is full of stories is only a comma? In the long span of the picture that is characterized by unending victory. It's been five years, but God has given you 80 years to prove to the devil he's alive. Hmm. There is hope for a tree. A time came, Peter was locked in prison. Now he understood. I'm sure in prison, Peter will be saying, yeah, so this is what happened to Jesus. After doing great and mighty things, Terrible things in righteousness. They, they watch the Holy Spirit come upon the church to begin a new dispensation. And now they locked him. James was in the prison. They said, don't worry, we know James. James is a powerful man. And later they just heard James has been beheaded. They said, you mean the knife entered? He died? He said, James is dead. All of a sudden there was panic. They said, my goodness, we thought the anointing was going to speak for James. Uncertainty. And now they caught Peter. I'm sure Peter concluded because the Bible does not record that when they came, they met him praying. He was sleeping. Peter said, well, for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. Whatever happens, I will go and meet Jesus Christ. But he did not know. See, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. If it is not your time, you remain immortal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? An angel came. And the Bible says the chains just fell by themselves. And he let Peter out. Same thing with Paul. Paul was used to dying. He testified. He would die immediately. They leave his spirit to just enter his body and you get up. And find somewhere and rest. And the job continues. Strange man. They would take reports that he's dead. And they would hear that he's in another city. Paul. Very strange man. To an extent that some men vowed that they will not eat. Have you read that in your Bible? They say we won't eat until this man dies to our supervision. We must make sure he's dead. I don't know what they did with their lives. Because Paul lived very long. When he went to that island called Melita, Paul rested there. There was peace and tranquility for some time. In a world full of uncertainty. In a world full of failure, 
in a world full of darkness, hope gives us the strength to continue. It gives us the energy to keep on moving. Still the same point. In life, in ministry, in business, in your marriage, in your academics. In other words, hope is the anchor that keeps us standing fast through the storms of life. Just like the anchor keeps the ship so that the waves will not take you too far. Hope is that anchor. Hope is that anchor that holds your life. When the boisterous storms of uncertainties in life come and buffet you like the house that is built upon the rock, sometimes it may be shaken, but hope will keep you alive. Number two, why do we need hope? Hope is one of the pillars upon which faith is built. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Hope is one of the pillars upon which faith is built. Without the revelation of hope, there cannot be faith. The Bible says, now faith is, Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is the what? The confident assurance of the things hoped for. So we must first hope for them. Speaking about Abraham, they said, who against all hope believed in hope? Against all hope, Romans chapter 4. Against all hope believed in hope. So hope is the pillar. One of the pillars upon which faith stands. And very quickly, I'm rushing so that we'll get to where I'm going to dwell for tonight. There are two dimensions of hope as taught in the Bible. Two dimensions of hope as taught in the Bible. Number one is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. The blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13 please. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. The blessed hope. It talks about hope that is beyond this earthly life. That's the first and the ultimate hope. Please listen to me tonight. Hope that is beyond this earthly life. Hope that is beyond the grave. The first dimension of hope that the Bible speaks to us about is what it calls the blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13. He said, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ. So the first hope that must keep us going in life, that must keep us optimistic in life, that must keep us assured in life, is what the Bible calls the blessed hope. That assurance that no matter what happens, even if this body is destroyed, there is a blessed hope. Are you getting what I'm saying? Confident assurance. That the grave is not the end of life. That in spite of all of the poverty and the terrorism and whatever it is, there is an assurance the Bible calls it the blessed hope. And listen, every other manifestation of hope you have in your life is useless until this is in place. Because this is hope beyond the earthly realm. Let me tell you something. There is life beyond this place. We were talking very passionately with the School of Ministry students yesterday and we were really considering the subject of life. We are actually examining the biblical view of success and fulfillment. And I was sharing with them a few things. If your hope does not transcend beyond this earthly realm, listen to me, then of all men, you are most miserable. The Bible says, I saw the grave give up the dead. Now, all this did not happen in the earth. Life was over for them. 
a time where those who had the blessed hope will rejoice. The sea gave up the dead. The grave gave up the dead. All of the people. And he said, I saw the dead stand before God. And he said, great and those who were great and small. I saw standing before God senators. And I saw carpenters. I saw vice chancellors and professors. And I saw villagers. I saw people who could not get food to eat. And I saw those who their dogs could eat the food of royalty. He said they all stood before God. And the moment of truth came. Books were open. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Books were open. And another book was open said every man was judged according to the writings of that book and he said whosoever's name ah, i like the bible no bribery no political party whosoever's name was not found you will carry your flag carry your 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 senatorial district carry whatever it is to the lake of fire carry your prestige and your accolades listen to me when you stand from the realm of the spirit and you look at the earth realm, it looks like a vapor. That's how it looks like. Anyone who has had a, a true visionary encounter and you have been given the privilege to look at earth, you know how you look at the cloud. The earth is truly like a mirage compared to spiritual realities. Therefore, we must have that blessed hope. That I know that as I'm going about my business, I know that as I'm doing whatever I'm doing, thank God for breakthrough, thank God for whatever, but I am assured that if I get out in the morning and for any reason under the sun I do not re return, don't doubt where I am. I've gone to a place of rest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must convince yourself, some of you are already afraid, there's no need being afraid of what must happen. Come to terms with it and win the war. Every time you begin, the greatest enemy of mankind as we know, they ask the wisest man, you know, societally speaking, he's considered to be the wisest man in the earth. They ask him what is the greatest problem of mankind. He said he's shocked that the government have not started talking about it. He said the fact that everybody will die. He said it's a very serious issue. We should forget about the issue of politics and oil and tackle this issue that men will die. You see that he's truly wise, right? He said, look at, we, we get up and we do the things that we do and there is one common denominator. Death. Millionaires have died in this country. Their money could not save them. Is that true? Men of God have died in this country. Habalists have died in this country. Children have died in this country. People have lost babies in the hospital. People have died 100 years plus. It makes no difference. Hear me. There is a blessed hope. There is a blessed hope. Everybody say blessed hope. This is the greatest consolation any man can have. Goodbye world. I'm staying no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin I'm staying no longer with you I've made up my mind To go God's way The rest of my life I've made up my mind To go God's way The rest of my life A day will come Let me tell you Every arrogant man in this earth Must come to his knees Oh yes, absolutely. There are men who live like they are gods of themselves. But my Bible says the earth is the Lord's. He said, once have I spoken and twice have we heard. All power does not belong to any political party. It does not belong to any terrorist group. There is a God that sits upon the circles of the earth. He may look powerless now, but a day will come. He will show his might like the brightness of the sun. And only those... Who have this blessed hope. Get five points without this blessed hope. You are nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Marry the finest woman in the world. 
the most handsome and the wealthiest man in the world without this blessed hope you are nothing listen do charity have a big ministry be on air organize crusades if you wish if you do not have this blessed hope in five minutes when your life evaporates like a vapor you have wasted your life are you hearing what i'm saying we consider everything else in our life but we do not pay attention to this blessed hope many of us it is a shame that for many pastors this is not even a theme of our messages again i'm going to talk about other aspects and we're going to pray and speak over ourselves but first and foremost i owe a responsibility and i told god our primary assignment as a ministry we have four mandates from god number one is massive salvation of souls i rather leave somebody listen listen look at what jesus said to somebody who was lying down he said your sins be forgiven and the people said what are you saying for many of us that is inferior to miracles hallelujah but he said your sins be forgiven in other words what you need is a blessed hope you need something higher than this the thief on the cross the other ones you know he began to harass jesus and talk and he was unrepentant even on the cross and the other one said uh -uh, shut your mouth we are getting a recompense for what we have done we are armed robbers they caught us they are, they are hanging us on the cross because we stole but this man is innocent and jesus looked at him and said this day my goodness my go all his life of misery became useful by one pronunciation to release him can you imagine that barabbas stood near the king of kings the one who could give him blessed hope yet he did not have it judas iscariot was the treasurer of the custodian of this blessed hope. Yet he did not receive it. He committed suicide and went to hell. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He went and bought a field with the money and killed himself. The blessed hope. Many times I think about my life. And I'm telling you, I live a very happy life. One of the reasons why I don't worry in my life is because I know that every other thing on earth will only happen if I'm alive. Is that true? The subject of CGPA is over when you go to be with the Lord. If the trumpet sounds now, okay, let me not talk about death. Since you're afraid of death, the trumpet will still sound. The Bible talks about his appearing. The trumpet sounds. Now, I guarantee you I'm out of this place. You just see this mic on the floor. You can come and carry it if you think that what we're saying is joke. Because there are people here who are hearing this and will just laugh. I remember writing a letter to some of my friends and classmates years ago, secondary school classmates. And one of my friends, he studied theater art. He said he saw my rapture entertainment paper, rapture entertainment newsletter. He said he's, he saw it, it got to him. I said, don't worry. It will be a newsletter indeed. By the time we check out of this place, brothers and sisters, there is an event called rapture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is not a prophetic event. It is a real event. It will happen. Where human beings will exit this earth, the greatest shock of humanity will happen. So I live my life with eternity in view. Yes, I want to be blessed financially. Yes, I want ministry to expand. Yet I want this and that to happen. But brothers and sisters, beyond that, that only becomes a worthy pursuit when you know that your eternal security is there. Let me tell you the truth. Satan's ultimate goal is not to make you poor. If that's all his goal, then he has insulted himself. Are you getting what I'm saying? Satan's ultimate goal is not to put curses and spells and witches and wizards. No, that's not Satan's ultimate goal. His ultimate goal is to make sure that number one, he terminates the possibility of the blessed hope in your life. When he finds out that there is no room, you are already lost, then he will try to deal with you from the earth realm so you can fraternize with him to secure the fact that you will not make it. Hallelujah. 
Imagine the nightmare Satan lives with, knowing he has been doomed forever. There is no opportunity for salvation. So every morning I wake up, Satan is afraid because the more we advance the kingdom, the more his time of doom comes near. He said, have you come to destroy us before our time? There is a time that is their own. It's for them. It has been earmarked. It's not a secret. They know it. That a dispensation will come where death, hell, and the grave will be casted into the lake of fire. The Bible calls it the second death. That is when officially the meter of eternity will start reading. Satan is aware. Satan is aware. That's why the moment you declare the name of the Lord and you commit your life to bringing people into the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have declared war on the gates of hell. There are people right here. Listen, I will never make assumptions. There are people here, you are looking at me. You know right now that if the trumpet sounds, the sincere truth is that you do not have this blessed hope. There is no guessing it, brothers and sisters. Uh, I can't remember exactly when I got born again. I think I just know that I love God. Look at me. Come. Madam, are you married? Yes. When? Uh, cry. When exactly was I married? I just know that somehow, somehow, this man used to stroll around and now we have many children. Are you married? And Sammy, are you married? People celebrate their wedding anniversaries with joy. True or false? We are 20 years in marriage and they smile. They say, for these 20 years, God has been faithful. Let me tell you something. There are many believers deceiving themselves. They do not have one what the Bible calls the assurance of salvation. And number two, they are not taking it seriously. We think about money and every other thing aside from the blessed hope. But tonight, the Lord wants to make all things new. I'm going to take an altar call. I just feel as you stop here and let's take a powerful altar call right now to the shame of the devil. Hallelujah. Listen. There is no playing games. Brothers and sisters, whether you are poor or rich, right now in the church, they say, don't threaten people. Don't teach about anything rapture. Just give them a good reason. <laughs> whether you feel threatened or not, let me tell you the truth. It will happen. Jesus is coming soon. Everything that needs to happen for him to come has happened. The final sign, the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom is what we are doing right now. And at every moment, his majesty can come. If you are afraid of the coming of Jesus Christ, it's because you are going to hell. It should be a thing we should rejoice about. And say, Lord, finally, an end comes to this life of misery. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everyone rise on your feet. We are going to take this altar call right now. Please let this be a solemn moment I am, I, am, I am dead serious with what is happening right now hallelujah there are people here who are said man of God I love the Lord I have served the Lord some of you may even be preachers but you are saying sincerely I am not sure that that blessed hope there is a condition for it to happen the Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's not anything that you have to do on your part. You just receive the free gift of salvation. The Bible says, for all have seen. All have seen. There's nothing embarrassing about realizing that you probably have not received the gift of salvation. He said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the Bible says, for God so loved the world. He gave his one and only begotten son. He said, whosoever, no selection, shall believe in him. Believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. There are people here. Some of you, you have been around church. You, you do a lot of spiritual things. And you have believed that that is a justification. 
We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. And our hope and all our pains will be no more. We will stand and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you forevermore. Oh, this is the destiny of the church. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. Our hope and all our fears will be no more and we will stand with the host of heaven and cry holy is the lamb we will worship and adore you evermore right now as we sing this song wherever you are inside and outside you need to come and surrender to jesus I like you to passionately like a man running away from fire find your way to the front right now find your way to the front right now find your way to the front right now the moment we raise this song I like you to come mean business with him we will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem all our pain and all our fears will be no more don't sit back deceiving yourself we will stand with the hosts of heaven and cry holy is the lamb we will worship and adore you forevermore we will stand in the golden city New Jerusalem will be no more and we will and cry holy is the Lamb we will worship and adore you forevermore for the last time now we will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. We will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you. and adore him forevermore the saints will see him holy 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 is the land that's what we will sing at his feet holy 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 is the land oh when this life is over that's our song holy 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 they that have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy. Standing, receiving all kinds of crowns of glory. Standing at His Majesty's where He will tell us, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We'll sing, Holy. All our pain and all our fears will be no more. I know this, that I will stand with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore. Listen, even if you live to 120 years hear me 
you're not going to die young don't be afraid this is not a funeral service we have a covenant of life and prosperity are you hearing what i'm saying but i'm telling you even if you live 200 years one of the interesting things in the bible is that they will mention a very long age of a man and then they will say and he died he still died some of you are standing and you are crying i tell you the truth there is nothing to be ashamed of tonight can be that night i don't care what you have done i don't care what you there are some of us who need to rededicate our lives. I just sense that there are still one or two people that need to join them and say, for me, I'm rededicating it. I'm saying, Lord, I surrender everything. I've been stubborn towards the will and the purposes of God. You are part of that inside and outside. Join them quickly as I pray for you. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a light that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so. Hallelujah. Those of us in front here, in one minute, I'd like you to talk to the lover of your soul talk to him he died for you the bible says while we were yet sinners as you pray i want you to think about your life in one minute and tell yourself it's over enough of playing games and for all of us who are standing don't think because you are standing it means you should not reflect please in one minute i like everybody to reflect on your life am i living my life in a way that if i see it being replayed I will be glad I live that way. Am I living my life in a way that if I am to watch myself in heaven, I will say, thank you, Jesus. I spent my life on the purposes of the kingdom. Lift your voice and pray. This is serious business tonight. This is why Jesus shed his blood. Please, don't you think we are playing games tonight? This is a very serious issue. If you're under the sound of my voice, you should be thinking about your life very deeply and seriously. No man will stand for you on that day. There is no advocate, no pastor, no prophet, no apostle. He said, books were open. I saw the dead, both small and great. Let what you are hearing tonight not stand against you in the day of judgment. pray those of you in front pray jesus you died for me jesus you died for me i return to you now i return to you jesus son of god I believe in you. I believe in you. That's what you should be saying, those of you kneeling down in front. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I just the voices, I like you to hush it from the depths of your heart. Jesus. He said, Whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have life everlasting. Whosoever believes in him. Hallelujah. Those of you in front, I like you to say after me from the depths of your heart. I never forget this day. Some of you are rededicating yourself. Some of you are truly surrendering all. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender every aspect of my life completely to you. I make you Lord of my life. I have run away from you for too long. But tonight, like a prodigal child, I return home. 
to you the lover of my soul I return to you wash me with your blood cleanse me make me new give me a new beginning write my name in the Lamb's book of life that when this life is over I will have that blessed hope I declare today that I willingly consciously make Jesus Lord of my life I'm willing to live by your word in the name of Jesus father what a privilege what a privilege I ask you in the name of your son Jesus Christ that the grace for a new beginning give them in the name of Jesus for many of them they have been running like a deer that pants for the water and tonight they have found salvation I ask that this will be a genuine desire that on that day when we all stand we will see them I bless you I declare your sins forgiven I declare that your name is in the Lamb's book of life and I declare that Jesus is Lord of your life from tonight grace to walk in righteousness I cut you away from any lifestyle that is not consistent with the character of the kingdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ a big congratulations to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah please I'd like you to follow the ushers in one minute they'll just have your details and you return back to your seat hallelujah hallelujah for those of us standing before we continue there's one more aspect that I must touch and then we'll pray in one minute I'd like you to pray and say Lord you have found me keep me keep me go ahead and pray keep me keep me pray Lord you have found me keep me oh yes now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless now unto him who is able to keep you from falling in the midst of the pressures and the challenges of life keep me keep me from falling it says and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom thine is the power and thine is the glory keep me from falling that I will serve you all my life that I will serve you all my life hallelujah hallelujah God bless you please sit down let's finish up so there are two dimensions of hope the first is the blessed hope and according to Titus chapter 2 verse 13 the blessed hope talks about the return of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fact that we'll be spending eternity with him in a place of absolute rest I wrote a song maybe 10 13 years ago the coming of the Lord is near and I can hear the drown of the trumpet so loud when the dead in Christ shall rise again and we who are alive will be caught up in glory to a place of rest called heaven called paradise and there we will rejoice forevermore remember writing that song was my communication I've taken God serious all my life and I want to encourage us stay with God stay with God a time will come where we will be in a place of absolute rest and peace and love forever where there will be no wars no terrorism no hunger no issue of jam and wayek no issue of corruption and death and sickness and 
that is our blessed hope. Hallelujah. Absolutely. The second aspect of hope, we'll deal with that now. When your eternity is secured, you can deal with the quality of your life here on earth. And that's what we want to deal with very quickly. The fact that our ultimate hope is beyond this life. It's not a guarantee that we should allow the devil to buffet our lives here in the earth realm. The Bible says, having the promise of this life, uh, having the promise, uh, how did he put it now? We're going to get to that scripture. First Timothy, I, I think, we'll get there, we'll get there. Let me just skip it. The second dimension of hope is what the Bible calls hope in this life. Hope in this life. So our hope is not just in heaven alone. We have hope even in this life. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. 1 Timothy media if you can help us. Everyone say hope in this life. Yes. If you are supposed to live 90 years old and you are 25 years now or 30 years, how many more years do you have? At least 60 or 65 years. You don't want it to be 65 years of hopelessness and misery. Hallelujah. So we must have hope even in this life. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. He said, but bodily exercise profited little. For bodily exercise profited little. But godliness is profitable to all things. He said, having the promise and expectation of the life that now is, huh? and then that which is to come. So, there is a promise of the quality of life that now is. Jesus speaking to the, to the disciples said, no man who has left father or mother or land houses for my sake and for the kingdom's he said, but he will receive in this life. This and that and that and then in the life to come, life everlasting. There are issues in our life today that we are discouraged about and we must sustain the grace to deal with it. Praise the Lord. We need hope in this life to be able to achieve our goals, to be able to push through the walls of limitations, to be able to overcome challenges and obstacles and to triumph over circumstances. I'll take it again. We need hope in this life so that we can achieve our goals. We can push through the walls of limitations. We can overcome challenges and obstacles and finally triumph over circumstances. These are the two dimensions of hope. One is the blessed hope at the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the other is the hope we have that assures us of victory here and now. Praise the Lord. Now very quickly. What is the basis for hope? What is the biblical basis for hope? Let's start with our blessed hope. That means what is the foundation, what is the assurance, what is the condition, what is the basis on which we have our hope. The blessed hope. What gives us assurance that what we call blessed hope is not a lie? What gives us that assurance that we will partake of it? Number one is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ. The first basis for our blessed hope, hope beyond this life, is the sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ that has given us access to eternal life and peace with God. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. So the basis for my spending eternity with God, the basis for that hope that I have is the fact that Jesus died. The sacrificial and the substitutionary work of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
that today has granted me access to eternal life and peace with God through the blood of Jesus. Romans chapter 6 from verse 23. Hallelujah. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And that eternal life comes through the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. So based on the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ, it gives me a basis for having that blessed hope. That truly, on account of what Christ has done, I will be able to stand blameless before the throne. Hallelujah. Number two, what gives us the basis for the blessed hope is the words and the prophecies in the Bible, which we consider to be true. Revelations 21 verse 1 to 5. Let's rush, please. Two major reasons why we have assurance that this blessed hope is true. Number one is that Jesus died and he has given us access. Number two is that the concept of this blessed hope has been written in the Bible and we believe it to be true. I saw a new heaven, Revelations 21. This was the revelation that was given to John the Apostle in the Isle of Patmos. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So John tells us, based on the prophecy in the book, that there was truly a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Verse 2. And I, John, saw it. Are you seeing that now? John saw it. So he's not telling us what an angel told him. John saw it. So it gives us the basis of assurance. I saw the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4. We're reading to five. And God shall wipe away their tears. You see where we got the song that we're singing? He shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And God himself tells us in verse five. He said, and he that sat on the throne, not a delegate. He said, behold, I make all things new. And he said, write for these words are true and faithful. So we can believe it. God himself endorsed it. That the concept of this blessed hope against all scientific odds is true. Write it. He said, document it so that those who will read this prophecy will know that there is truly a blessed hope. Are you blessed? So the substitutionary work of Jesus Christ gives us the basis for our blessed hope. Hallelujah. And then the prophecies of the Bible given and endorsed by God himself further gives us an assurance. So that is the, the, the basis for our blessed hope. What is the basis for our hope in this life then? The second dimension. What gives us assurance that the cancer will die what gives us assurance that you will build the house what gives us assurance that in spite of all of the delays and the frustration in your life you will emerge a champion what gives you assurance that the ministry that looks small today would be of global impact i call them the attributes of god there are three attributes of god that gives us confidence and gives us hope in this life. The first attribute of God that gives us hope in this life is his creative ability. The first attribute of God that becomes the basis for our hope in this life is his creative ability. His ability to make something out of nothing gives us hope. So no matter how hopeless my life is, when I look at that attribute of God, that it is still within his power to make something with no raw material, I know that there is hope for me. So when God says he can change my story 
I can believe in and I'm hold on to that is attribute. I preached a message, uh, I think it was last year, faith in the faithfulness of God. You can have faith in the attributes of God. I can have faith in the creative ability of God. And the Bible is full of this. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, just write it, we may not project it. The Bible says, verse 2, the earth was dark and void and formless. That was a hopeless situation. But then we see the creative power of God. He said, and Elohim said, light be. All of a sudden, he began to recreate the earth out of nothing. If God can recreate the earth out of nothing, it means he can recreate my life no matter what is missing. So that revelation gives me hope to hold on to him. The attribute of God, his creative attributes. In John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14, John chapter 6 from verse 1 to 14, specifically from verse 9 to 12, the entire text of five loaves and two fish, we see the creative ability of God at work. 5,000 men aside women and children, they were hungry. And Andrew saw a young lad having five loaves and two fish. And they brought it to Jesus. And Jesus said, no problem. It's not a hopeless situation when I am there. It is within my power to create. The Bible says he lifted it and he gave thanks. All of a sudden, we saw creation at work again. Hallelujah. Everyone say, God has creative power. Because you see, for many of us, it is difficult to see how God will step in and change your situation. Because the raw material you know to produce that change has been lost. Are you getting my point? How can I have hope that I will give birth to a child when the womb that should, should keep the child has been removed? Are you getting my point? Maybe because of fibroid or something, the womb was, it was removed. I saw it. I know it's gone. Can I still have hope? The creator. The creator. Hallelujah. He said, all I need is your cooperation. The creator. The one who can make, nothing is still a raw material for him. Everyone say, God has creative ability. So there is hope for my life. I think it was here we had a testimony about someone who jam came out. Remember that jam? And there was 100 and something. Hallelujah. 100 and something. And I think after one of the miracle services or so, the person went back to check the jam, confirmed he had 200 and something. The creator. See, let me tell you, the attributes of God represent the possibilities in him. And the one you believe is the one that can work for you. All of the multifaceted attributes of God represent the possibilities in him. I believe every part of him. I believe everything that he can do. So, the attributes of God, the first is his creative ability. It gives us the basis to have hope in this life. Number two is God's restorative ability. His ability to restore. What does it mean to restore? To bring back to life that which is dead. To make perfect that which is imperfect. And to bring back lost opportunities. God is able to do that. God is able to do that. There is an attribute of God that can restore things. So it gives us hope that even when our situations look hopeless, when God steps in, he can restore. In Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1 to 7, just write it. Just write it for time's sake. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7, Ezekiel said that he took me in the spirit of the Lord to a, a valley full of dry bones. Hallelujah. The prophet of God was taken to a valley. The Bible says there were very many and the bones were very dry, meaning they had been there in a long time. And he says, son of man, can these bones live again? And the prophet said, only thou knowest. And he said, prophesy. Speak to these bones. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, at the prophet's word, bones began to be joined to bones. I'd like you to say, God can restore. Say it, God can restore. 
God can bring back to life that which is dead in my life. God can make perfect that which is imperfect in my life. And God can restore lost opportunities in my life. Oh yes. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Arise. Everything that was lost can be restored. I'd like you to say hallelujah. In John chapter 11, the entire text is from verse 1 to 44. But the part that concerns us is 17 to 27 and 39 to 44. Don't project it because of time. It talks about the story of a man called Lazarus in a place called Bethany. The Bible tells us that Lazarus, one who was greatly beloved of Jesus Christ, Jesus loved him so much. A report got to Jesus and they said, Lazarus whom you love is sick. And Jesus said, don't worry. The sickness is not unto death. Meaning the situation would not be worse than it already is. And when the master speaks, you believe him. But then they returned. And Jesus told them, let's go to our brother Lazarus for he sleepeth. And they said, ah, if he sleepeth, it's good for him. And then he came directly. He said, our brother Lazarus is dead. Four days. And the restorer, he was on his way coming. And when Mary saw him, she was angry. She was grieved. And they said, Master, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. He said, but now I know that it's not late. And Jesus said, Lazarus, your brother will arise. There will be restoration. He said, I know, Lazarus, I know you have already been speaking about the blessed hope. I know. And Jesus said, do you not know that I am the resurrection? That means it's not an event. It's a personality. It can happen now for you. I am the resurrection and I am the life. And he looked at a stone. Men had concluded. And he said, roll away the stone. Let's review that case. For 10 years, your father's promotion has been delayed. But he said, roll away the stone. You take a step of faith. Show me that you have hope by going to roll away the stone. I will roll it for you. Roll it. If you want me to visit that case, roll away the stone. And they rolled away the stone. And Jesus stood. And in chapter 35, the Bible says, and Jesus wept. He had so much compassion. And he said, Father, I thank you because you hear me always. And I don't say this because I'm doubting you, paraphrasing, but so that these people will know. And he echoed a voice, the resurrection and the life. He sent a signal that rattled Hades, the place of death, the dead people. And he said, Lazarus, you know why he mentioned Lazarus' name? If he just said, come forth, every dead person would have come to life. And so he mentioned the one he wanted to come. He sent a word, and that word came, passed through the astral realm, and went, and the word like a meter, and it saw the spirit of Lazarus, and he said, the master calleth. That's how rapture will happen. The blast of the trumpet will rattle through the gates of the spirit. And the doors of life will open. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And all of a sudden, they saw a man coming out. And he said, take off those grave clothes. Oh, God can restore. Who asked you to close those chapters in your life? Am I speaking to you? Who asked you to close the chapters? There are people who do not even confront certain issues again because they have closed it. But tonight the Lord is saying, open it up. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I want to visit it. I gave you a prophetic word, but it is November right now. Can that word still come to pass? Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, I have learned from experience and I have learned in my life that all we need to do, listen, the manifestation of your miracle does not take time. 
it is the process of preparation that takes time. For about 12 years, Joseph was being trained. But in one night, he slept a prisoner and woke up a prime minister. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In one night, Hadassah, Esther, for one year, she kept preparing. Listen, the fact that you are going through a period of pruning, a period of waiting does not mean God is not moving. If you think he's too slow, you will want to move faster than him and you will complicate your journey. Wait. In one night, God changed the story of a nation. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow, even if he said by this time next year, it will be fair enough. But he said tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. Someone is sitting here tonight. By tomorrow night, you will sit down with your hand on your head and you'll be saying, my Lord, I didn't know I was this close. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it. That's the testimony of many people now. Listen, you are... You have come so close. You've been enduring for years. But now that you are about to break open the gates of destiny, many of us want to turn back. I want you to know that the restoration ability of God is still in force. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I almost can't go. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough, but couldn't see. Oh, listen, let me tell you something. I trust the Lord. Something happened to us, a very interesting story. I won't give you all the details. Happened to us at the airport when we were traveling. Some things came up. There were lots of complications, and it was going to affect our tickets and all of that. And, you know, we were a bit concerned because I think there was issue of overbooking and so on and so forth. And... We had to make sure that we arrived on time and all of that. And humanly speaking, humanly speaking, at a point, in fact, about 30 minutes, 30 minutes to the time that we eventually secured the tickets, there was, all hope was lost. They told us there's no room again. This and that and that has happened. So they, they were, there had to be changes and there was no human way. I called the guys and I said, guys, this is the situation we're in now. If things get bad, this and that and that, this is worse. Let's just prepare for the worst, but God is faithful. Let me tell you something. It did not take more than 10 minutes before they wrote all of the tickets. Is that true? We're the last to, to get into the flight. Hallelujah. They were standing. I'm not sure they were even aware. You see that? And they just, the tick, everything was in less than 10 minutes. God, when God is ready to stand up on your case, see, when you see God keep quiet, Papa Deboye preached a message, when God is silent, when God is silent, that's when you should start talking, praise him, give him room, give him space through your, your praise, and say, Lord, I don't know what you are doing, but I know you are doing something. Take the time to prepare the table, because it's going to be a large table. There are people who should come. Take the time. When God arises, he will scatter. And let me tell you something. When it is your season of breakthrough, I don't care whether they say curses or yokes or X, Y, Z. God will stamp everything and open the door and say, let me see the man who will stop you. For someone, if you will just wait a little longer, this is the word of the Lord. The miracle will happen before you celebrate Christmas. Just wait a little longer. The mighty God is still alive. He told you and he's still faithful. Oh, we judge him faithful. It will still happen. It will still happen. Who is God speaking to? It will still happen. It will still happen. One of our brothers here, both him and, the, and his wife, the, the ladies in Osh, Oshas and all of that. I remember when that brother met me. They are married now. They married early this year. I think around April. I remember when that brother met me. And the brother was, you know, he was sharing with me a bit about his marriage life and all of that. And I told him, I said, God will bless you and God will do a quick work. Brothers and sisters, within a short time, I was shocked. And if you see the pretty and godly lady, a combination of everything, within and without. Come on, ushers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whereas someone has been searching without the help of God for decades searched all over 
Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Let's sing it one more time. I searched all over. Come on. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Hallelujah. His ability to restore. God can restore the job of your father. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God can restore it. He can restore it. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. God can restore every aspect of your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said, I will restore to you the years the canker worm has stolen, the palmer worm and the caterpillar. I will restore. It is within my power to restore. The second attribute of God. In 2 Kings chapter 6, 2 Kings chapter 6, let's project it very quickly. 2 Kings chapter 6. I want us to hurry up because we'll pray. Wow. We must rush from now take up wings we're going to rush hallelujah 6 verse 1 and the sons of the prophets came to Elisha behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us verse 2 let us go we pray thee unto Jordan and take thence every man a beam and let us make a place there where we may dwell and he answered he said go ye in other words let's increase space verse 3 and, and one said, be content, I pray thee, to go with thy servants. And so Elisha goes with them. Verse 4. So they went with them. He said, and as they came to Jordan, they were cutting down wood to make the place for their meeting. 5. But as one was felling the beam, what happened? The axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, alas, master. It was borrowed. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I need help. I collected this to do the work of God, but it has landed me in trouble. Mm. Verse 6. And the man of God said, Calm down. He said, Where did it fall? There is a God that can restore. Who is God speaking to? And he showed him the place. And he used an insignificant thing. Sorry. A stick that has no relevance and he threw it upon and the Bible says the iron from under started swimming until it came to the top verse 7 therefore he said take it up to him and he took his hand I prophesy to someone in the name that is above all names in a way and a manner you never expected to happen my God will show up for you before the end of this month in the name that is above all names i'm speaking to you there are things that you have lost and only god can give you i stand in under my office and in the name that is above all names i prophesy to you no matter where that axe is it is still in the river it didn't disappear it only left you in the name that is above all names we command that axe head to float please sit down listen look at me the fact that you don't see a thing does not mean it has stopped existing it is there but it is not within your reach it is within the power of the master to call it from wherever it is i hope you understand how many of us can state um i think that's the first law of thermodynamics right what does it say Huh? energy can neither be what nor destroyed is that true 
that means the concept of disappearance is a mirage it only leaves your sight but is somewhere there mm. the bones were scattered but when the master spoke they found themselves you would have thought it's over hear me let me tell you something armed robbers came to your house and they stole you do not see what they've carried but there are many kinds of it in the earth and when the master steps up as a restorer you will see things in dramatic ways come into your life and when God restores he does not give you what you lost he gives you what you lost and what you would have gained if you still had it that's what restoration is if God just gives you what you lost it's called progress not restoration until God gives you plus the balance on top he said who has believed our report the third attribute of God very quickly that gives us the basis for hope in this life is God's ability to bring acceleration God's ability his attribute as a God that can suspend time he can move beyond time move beyond protocols he can expedite the process of certain things his ability to bring acceleration in first Kings chapter 18 from verse 41 to 46 first Kings chapter 18 from verse 41 to 46 the Bible speaks to us about the prophet hallelujah a great prophet of God and Elijah said unto Ahab get thee up and drink for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain next verse we read down to 46 and Ahab went to eat and drink and Elijah went to the top of Camel watch this Ahab ate and drink and he started running he had started going but Elijah seemed to be delayed he was here sitting let's watch what happens and he cast himself down upon the earth and prayed 43 and all of that he told his servant go and check until seven times 44 all the time while those seven times were happening Ahab was already running he was already moving ahead the Bible says it came to pass that behold there arises a little cloud like a man's hand and he said go up and say to Ahab okay right here sorry I, I got it wrong this is the point where he told Ahab prepare your chariot get it down and uh, that the rain stopped in us so now he started running verse 45 ah kabola kataya the Bible says, and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. So we see that Ahab had gone very far but the man of God was there, no help. 46 And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he gathered up his loins and ran on barefoot. Come on, say speed. A man on barefoot started running. He said he ran before Ahab and he caught up with him down to Jezreel. So it gives us hope that no matter what the delay is, God can, God can give speed to your feet. And you will run and in one month, you will do what has taken men 10 years. 10 years. Brothers and sisters, believe me, it is possible. When God quickens, he said he will make your feet like the hind's feet. His ability to bring acceleration the Bible tells us how that when Jesus told the disciples to go to the other side they entered the boat and they started going ahead of him is that true and the Bible says he stayed to pray they were six hours ahead of Jesus six hours ahead but when he got up he started walking and within a short time he caught up with them and he was about to overtake them they thought he was a ghost and he walked on water it doesn't have to be the normal process when God steps in he can break protocols are you hearing what I'm saying in John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 but our verse of emphasis is from verse 6 to 10 project verse 6 to 10 for us John chapter 2 from verse 6 to 10 the Bible tells us about a wedding in Cana 
and the bible tells us they took out time to prepare that wedding it probably took them days to make wine but that wine finished they needed a miracle and something happened it says and they were there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the jews containing two or three this and that and then verse seven and jesus said fill the water pots it does not have to undergo the process of fermentation there is a spiritual fermentation process that can happen come on now ah yes you don't need to wait until it produces all of those things are you getting what i'm saying no enzymes no nothing no ethanol no nothing no no hydrocarbon no nothing a technology in the spirit fill the water pots with water and they fill them up to the brim verse 8 and he said draw it out and take it to the governor chemical reaction finished yield 100 percent are you getting my point 100 percent no waste nothing to throw away no releasing of any co2 or anything no chemical process finished expedited time at once and he said draw it out and take it verse 9 and when the ruler of the feast tasted the wine so on the way it became wine at once and he knew not whence it was he said the governor of the feast called the bridegroom verse 10 and he said every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine and when men have well drunk then that which is worse comes in other words people give their best at the first time but he said why have you kept the good wine until now there is someone here within a short time what you will do men will think you took 10 years to do it but that it happened within days one of our brothers Mukhtar I think he did his whole, his whole project within a short time because they later canceled the whole thing and what he did within two days was greater than what he did in months everybody shout speed shout it again oh god will accelerate your life hallelujah finally before we pray how do we activate hope it must be activated it doesn't just happen three keys and we'll rise up to pray activating hope principle number one total surrender to the lordship of jesus christ you want to activate hope in your life both blessed hope and hope in this life it starts with surrendering to jesus christ total surrender gives you an eternal consolation that in the end of all things you will be with jesus forever i call it the master hope the master hope when you surrender to the lordship of jesus christ you have ultimately activated hope scriptural references romans 5 verse 2 don't project romans 5 verse 2 and then first john 5 verse 13 talks about us knowing that we have eternal life so total surrender to the lordship of jesus number two how do we activate hope the power of testimonies the power of testimonies The power of testimonies. Psalm 66 verse 16. The power of testimonies. Psalm 66 verse 16. Declaring your testimony activates an assurance in the listeners. The Bible is full of testimonies that many have held on to and seen it reproduced in their lives testimonies can reproduce themselves in the lives of the listeners so every time i testify of what god has done in my life it activates hope so someone who is about giving up just hears that god did this and he said if god did it then i will still hold on hallelujah psalm 66 verse 16 says come and hear all ye that fear the lord and i will declare what he had done for my soul i will declare it i will declare it in luke chapter 8 from verse 26 to 39 just give us verse 39 luke chapter 8 from verse 39 but the whole context is 26 to 39 the bible speaks to us about the madman in gadara hallelujah 
the madman in Gadara, after he was healed, he was blessed. He wanted to go with Jesus and Jesus said, no, go. And the Bible says, return to your house. Jesus was telling him, go and testify. Return to your house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And the Bible says, and he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. So he published. Testimonies are very powerful. Let me give you two more scriptures. Psalm 22 verse 22. And Psalms 40 verse 9. Psalms 22 verse 22. And Psalms 40 verse 9. All these scriptures point to the fact that it is important for us to testify. In fact, the Bible says it this way. It says, and they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Your testimony is very important. There are many people here, God has done too many things for you, but nobody knows. Nobody knows about it. Hallelujah. When they say, submit your, your names and come and tell us what God has done. There are many of us here that have striking testimonies. Many of us come for counseling and God does remarkable things and we keep quiet. I tell you, we don't share one over 20 of the remarkable testimonies that happen in this house and through this ministry. In fact, there are more people who share testimonies outside of Koinonia than those who share testimonies here. When you share your testimony, you, you activate hope in the life of people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'll never forget Steve Strings. I remember one time um, he gave a testimony. It was a miracle how he got admission in ABU. He got admission on the third list. The first list came out, his name was not there. The second list came out and his name was not there. But he had the testimony of someone who were living faith that Sunday. And the testimony of somebody. And the person testified that he went around Senate seven times. Angry and saying, Lord, this is Jericho. It must fall. And when admission list came out, his name was there. Steve Strings said, that's it. Steve Strings went around seven times. That list came out. His name was there because of testimonies. Listen, many of you have taken the same steps some people took and you got the result, but you have kept quiet. Hallelujah. One of our school of ministry people, he, he came in, I think he should be around here, and he came, he, he sent me a text, a very humbling testimony. In fact, I told him to come over at the school of ministry tomorrow just to share with, with our current students to bless them what God has remarkably done in his life within a short time. God has done too many things for us. And if you will not give him the glory, you will stop seeing his hand in your life. He said, if you will not glorify me, I will raise up stones. Meaning, I will only raise up what will glorify me. Hallelujah. So, the power of testimonies. Number three, and this is where we wrap up tonight. The ministry of prophets of God. How do you activate hope? The ministry of true prophets of God. Not just prophets in office, but men and women of God who stand in prophetic dimensions listen to me this is this is very important i want you to listen because we're about to pray all through scripture true prophets of god have been dispensers of hope and agents of change men have always been god's weapons that he will use to bring hope alive and to create changes in people hallelujah Joseph was the prophet of God that was sent to Egypt to preserve them. Elijah was sent to a widow in Zarephath to preserve her and restore to her what the famine had taken. Elijah was also sent, um, Elisha was sent to the woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. The Bible talks about the wife of the sons of the prophet. They were about to take her children and do trade by butter with them. And the woman ran to the prophet. And the prophet said, what do you have in your house? Do this and that and that. And the woman came out of the situation. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 5, the story of Naaman. 
the Bible says Naaman was the captain of the of the Syrian army he was a great man but he was leprous hallelujah and when they sent him with a letter the prophet gave an instruction go and wash yourself seven times in Jordan and that was it the scripture we just shared in 2nd Kings chapter 6 the restoration of the axe head by the instruction of a prophet of God listen to me when a people lack a prophetic voice when a people or a ministry or a terror a, a, a territory lack true apostolic and prophetic voices then hopelessness despair and doom will become their experience i'm saying this please get it i'll repeat myself when a people when a ministry when a territory lacks true apostolic and prophetic voices then hopelessness despair and doom becomes their experience again and again and again i'm trying to look for a scripture that just came to my spirit ezekiel 22 verse 30 let's look at something that the prophet said ezekiel 22 verse 30 we're rounding up right now while they project that i'd like you to write ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 7 we've read the scripture the valley of dry bones it happened to the prophet of god the prophet of god gave an instruction every time you are in need of hope you are in need of change among other principles you engage in is find a true prophet of god he said and i sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that i should not destroy it but i found none so i destroyed the land because there was no man the bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore there must be a voice let me tell you something in every territory and every every society there are prophetic agents that god plans strategically they represent dispensers of hope men who god stamps their voice stamp their words hallelujah hosea chapter 12 and verse 13 the last verse hosea chapter 12 the prophet told us something that has become an instruction in the body of christ hosea chapter 12 verse 13 he said and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt by what a prophet now hold on it is true that god delivered the people but their hopes were shattered until a man showed up they never it is true that there was a prophecy that there will be deliverance for them but nothing happened until a man moses showed up the moment that prophet of god appeared hope was brought back to life when they saw him he gathered them and said people begin to prepare you are days away from this captivity and you'll be out and he went and challenged that 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 god called pharaoh bishop oyedeko said prophets are territorial commanders his exact word now it may sound arrogant but it is not it's an election of grace when God calls a man and truly puts a true apostolic and prophetic man to, God makes it a point of duty to back you. When you speak in the name of the Lord, he said, I prophesied, but I did it as I was commanded. And he said, hear ye the word of the Lord, spoken to an envoy. He said, believe the Lord. And by a prophet, sorry, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet he still preserved them the ministry of true apostles and prophets of god in the earth has not ended contrary to the popular theology that people speak it has not ended there are still men and women 
but you doubt their ministry to your detriment. The Bible said, believe the Lord and you shall be established. It said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Doubt the Lord and refuse to be established. Doubt his prophets and suffer for the rest of your life. It's not idol worship. I know there is an imbalance where men have made themselves gods. But I can tell you, it is part of the program of God to use men to speak in the purposes and the counsel of God. When the prophet Simeon held on to Jesus Christ, he began to prophesy to him. There was a prophet as 84 years she had been in the temple waiting for the consolation of Israel. She carried Jesus Christ and spoke and she was ready to die. And Jesus walked and nothing could kill him until he gave his life by a prophet. He came. Isaiah prophesied unto us a child is born. By a prophet he came. By a prophet he was preserved. If Jesus Christ needed to subscribe to the true ministry of the prophetic then you cannot do it hallelujah every time i pray for the miracle service i don't pray for too many things i don't pray god heal the sick cast out devils no that's not my prayer lord let there be something sign a signature upon someone's life upon someone's family you know i was spending a little time with my family in the afternoon and while we're talking about this my sister was speaking and said that um that it looks like this miracle service god is visiting families not just individuals he just wants to move past individuals remember i told you you are not free when your family is not free let me tell you sincerely he said as for me and my house if the jo the brothers of joseph all had dreams nobody would kill anybody it was because only one over how many had dreams and the rest said you are joking you saw the sun the moon and 11 stars bow but when everybody rises by the finger of god then it is a testimony i don't know who has said what about your life and about your family but give god a few minutes tonight to answer them god has an answer my brothers and my sisters the god we serve is not man don't get used to it god is not a president of a ministry god is not the ceo of a bank god is not the cmd of a hospital god is not a monarch on earth waiting to die for someone no he sits in the circles of the heaven by himself and manipulate all things according to the counsel of his will you will do yourself harm tonight to sit down believing it will happen just as before come with your vessels increased and enlarged lord i know you are stepping in i know you are changing my life it's june but people have laughed at me where is the extraordinary fruitfulness i'm still begging i don't even have two hundred and fifty thousand to pay rent my prayer life has gone down ha! this god of heaven my brothers and my sisters it doesn't take time when god opens his mouth from heaven anything plus anything plus god is the answer he says should be your weakness plus god is whatever answer he says to be your limitation plus god is whatever answer he will be i continue to pray and i say lord let this ministry remain not just a place of signs and wonders but a sign and a wonder itself If you are looking for a salmon and you don't have data, just think about koinonia. And there is salmon is you are you are seeing a marvelous God. Listen, by the grace of God, within the time God has given us, we will we will disprove the pride of men in this world. All of those mundane rules that have been put by the arrogance of men. That they claim even God should honor. God has sent us to disprove them. That whoever told you that you have to build a house from salary. Whoever told you you have to feed your children from pension. Whoever told you that it will take 20 years to know God. Whoever told you that your ministry must increase 10 members per week. There is a generation that will answer the arrogance of men. Please don't get used to the natural course of things. 
there is an advantage God programmed in the journey of the believer what I call systems of advantage his mercy is a system of advantage his favor is a system of advantage it cannot happen to you the way it happens to men don't get used to it I don't expect my life to be ordinary I expect something spectacular every day like a soup opera there is an episode of signs and wonders listen that people can look at your life and say let's watch God what God will do this week because there has to be a message it's impossible for Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday and there is no message no you are not a sign and a wonder you have what it takes to do signs and wonders but God wants you to be the sign yourself to be like that star that shines in the east that when men look at you they say what manner of God is this men whom the earth was not worthy of see there is nothing the devil can do about this no there is a kind of speed that God can bring to your life regardless of who loves you or who does not love you it doesn't play any role God just sits upon you with his jealousy and decides to make a statement let me tell you fearful is the man that God decides to use as a canvas to write a statement you will look for their downfall wasting your time they will just continue to rise held by the jealousy of God himself Are we together now? Please sit down. God can choose to love Jacob. God can choose to honor Jabez. God can choose to lift Rahab. God can choose to turn the story of Ruth around. God can choose to cause Abraham to be the father of nations. He is God. Who should he consult with? Where is the parliament that must accredit him? Listen. We live in a proud world where men sit down and make it look like I am the reason for your lifting. If you ignore me, you will die. And while it is true that men are pipes, we have 7.2 billion of them. That's enough variety for God to choose. No single man can get up in arrogance and pocket your destiny no I'm shaking off fear and unbelief from you so that when we begin to minister you don't just stand some of you may have written some things in your prayer request and left others because you have convinced yourself that God cannot go that far my brothers and sisters what does God need to do in your life again for you to believe that he is mighty. Hallelujah. I told the Lord something. I said, Lord, let my life be a sign and a wonder. A testament of what you can do with a man that loves you. Much more than celebrating a man like you did. It is, it is the celebration of God and the possibilities that he can birth on earth. That my life will not limit God. No way. I like the things men say cannot be done. If it is God that says it cannot be done, I will not even try it. Because it's a waste of time. But if it's man that says it cannot be done, I say, God, what do you say? Ah. When Jesus came, he said, you say this in your law, but this is what I say. You say this in your law, but this is what I say. Like he's speaking to someone. They said this in your family, but this is what I say. He can veto anything and turn a man's life around. Hallelujah. Someone gave me a very humorous testimony. I think it was yesterday. They had been trying to pursue something that has to do with the dad. And, um, uh, you know... I think the dad is, is, is in the force or something and they are just deprived that man for five years 
I think if I'm if I'm not mistaken, no salary, no benefits because some ammunitions were missing and they traced to, to him. Imagine a breadwinner of a family for about five years, things went down. And you know, if, if he wins the case, they will have to restore everything plus damages. Are we together? And they kept manipulating, manipulating. And I think just yesterday I was told that, was it yesterday or I think this week, the verdict came out and came out in the father's favor. I said, you people should start dancing in your household because whether the devil likes it or not, everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Things never get missing. They only leave you. They are still on earth. Everything that leaves a man does not go out of the earth realm. It is only within a distance that is beyond your reach. There is a force from heaven that sustains an ability to call the things that be not and draw them. There is a force of attraction. I prophesied as I was commanded. It says, and the bones, they were all there. Just because you cannot see them does not mean they are not there. Everything you are looking for is looking for you too. And there is a force that can connect you to them. Please listen, I'm not just motivating you. The things that we have heard, the things we have seen, the things that our hands have handled. That who is he that saith a thing and it comes to pass? That God did not vet it and approve it? Let God be true and let every man, including your situation, be a liar. Listen to me. Please hear me. A miracle service is not just the time to pray for the sick. Not everybody is sick. You see the level of high blood pressure disturbing young people now? You see people talking like fools on the road. Someone in early 20s talking to himself, moving around. This our road from here to Abuja, almost every day someone is dying. Nobody leaves his house to die worry pastors collapse on stage i've told you that there is a technology that sends israel to egypt it's called hunger every time there is hunger israel must go to egypt to find bread genesis 42 please give it to us let's just read it i apologize the projection is not very clear but just see that scripture now everyone read if you can see it we're reading one and two. Ready? Read. Now, when Jacob saw that there was what? Corn. Where? In Egypt. Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? Verse two. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. This is a prophet. But lack of corn was making him mortgage his children. Go to Egypt. I'm a prophet but we're about to die. And I hear that wherever there is corn, that's where people go to. Look, let's not lie to ourselves. Wherever there is corn, that is where people go to. Including a prophet. He had, because the Bible says the increase of the earth is for all. And that even the king is fed from it. When there is corn in Egypt, believers will have to go down there. We need time to serve the Lord. We need time to bear the revival that he wants to bring. We need time to pursue the purposes of the kingdom. But that time cannot be given to you when you spend your life looking for corn in Egypt. It's a cost to go down to Egypt. But if that is the only place that has corn, then you will have to go down to eat. And then there arose another Pharaoh that knew not Joseph. And the people of God got into servitude and slavery. Don't mind the ignorant people who say it doesn't matter. You just serve God like that. 
according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness everyone say after me life, life. godliness life, life godliness there are things that pertain unto godliness your character your work with god your prayer life your spiritual development those are things that pertain unto godliness but there are things that pertain unto life your children's school fees your accommodation the well-being that any man who is unable to cater for his family according to scripture has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel so when the devil wants to discourage you as a man of god you're preparing a sermon and here comes your son with a pta letter and your eyes the letter is usually typed except where the money will be they write it with biro and the price is doubled you stand there wanting to kill your son why has the school fees been doubled and the child said they just gave me to give you and you look at it your salary is not increased nothing else is increased but the bills are rising the devil wants to send you to egypt a time will come what what you would not do yesterday you will now do tomorrow on the strength of the pain hunger can take men to egypt hallelujah a dear man of god called me i think uh, two weeks or so i don't know him so much and from one of these nations and he called me and was lamenting he said apostle pray for me our ministry is under serious financial attack he said right now honestly the way things are we may not even be able to hold our service because the bills you know things are going down economically and the givings of the people also seem to have followed and you know i got angry in my spirit i said this is the kind of news satan wants because you see very soon the devil will bring one rich man who will pocket that ministry because of one million or one five or ten million or whatever it is that he gives you will lose your voice lose your relevance lose your integrity on the platter of hunger was it not hunger that made Esau to sell his birthright only an irresponsible ministry will not address the issue of hunger that is going on there are many things to address but hunger should be one of them believers are hungry they need a technology that is higher than what has been proposed let me tell you there is a path which no fowl knoweth the whelps of the lion has not gotten there there are dimensions reserved for these times when god will bring out as a display of his intelligence do you not know that the strategy of saving 20 percent was god's intelligence it's not just an economic strategy there is always a reservoir in god's intelligence for times when people cry when the saints cry god will say show them that the wisdom of god is inexhaustible health care is one of the devourers in our world today do you know how much it takes to treat people once your son is sick you are crying already because you know how much does it take we have so many doctors here one of our doctors came and i asked him to check a woman and when he brought the list for the x-ray i said i will buy that machine oh. As, as that, <laughs> and open an x-ray an x-ray place i mean how much not the whole body i don't know what part of the body it was but when I saw the bills, I said for x-ray. And almost every day, someone has to go there. If you are collecting 50,000 naira and you use 30,000 for x-ray, there is no reason why that child will give you joy. Are we together? Anything that child does will annoy you. And then help that child, let him not take first or second or third. You will almost kill the child. There are real issues that we cannot laugh at real issues and this night god is determined to rise up and not only step in but turn things around john chapter 10 and verse 10 thank you john chapter 10 and verse 10 please it says the thief cometh not there is a name satan is called and here he is called the thief are we together if someone knocks your gate and you say who is that he said the thief 
you don't need to ask him what tribe what gender he will call the police immediately and say there is a thief there is an armed robber in front of my house and Jesus is preaching here and he says the thief cometh not that means you will never see him around but for to steal and to kill and to destroy so everywhere you see stealing killing and destruction is a signature the thief Satan he comes into a joyful family are we together happy husband come my dear happy wife when the thief comes in between them he must scatter everything one flimsy excuse or the other he will come in between business partners and shred them when satan passes a place you know this is him he will leave his signature stealing killing destruction we would be in trouble if jesus stopped there but he says i am come hmm. he didn't say i have come i am has come to bring life and that you have that life more abundantly lavishly I am come that you may have life I am come that you may have solutions I have come to show you that there is a way out of this I am come to show you that there are possibilities are we together now now the last thing I want to say before we begin to pray I will continue to teach this because repetition is the key to persuasion the bible says according as his divine power please give it to us that second first um second peter chapter one from verse two please grace and peace verse two be multiplied unto you at, through the knowledge of god and of jesus our lord verse three it says according as his divine power hath given us so what gives us in this kingdom his divine power never forget this it is not faith faith is a channel that allows his divine power to pass the agency the force that is responsible for connecting us with spiritual possibilities is his divine power for many years there has been an argument about the workings of faith and the anointing there is no argument there are we together faith is the pipe that the power of god flows to to carry supernatural solutions to you if there is no faith there is no channel of the power from the throne room to your situation it will not be possible you don't choose faith or the power of god that's not a theology taught in the bible he never taught any of them in isolation his divine power every request on your list will be solved by his divine power now let me teach you this i've taught you again what is on you is what controls the results around you please never forget this the results around you do not fabricate themselves the results around you are mirrors they are a reflection of the kind the level the dimension of the grace that is upon you so i can know the grace on you by looking at the possibilities in your life i can know what grace has come upon you by looking at what changes it is impossible to increase in grace and your possibilities remain the same no the testimonies that recycle around your life are an attest they are they attest to the fact that this is the level and the extent of grace hear me every door can open it just depends on the grace asking it to open everybody is a giver it depends on the grace that asks them to give someone can refuse to bless you and yet carry a millionaire and meet someone else and say give me the privilege of blessing you nobody is really stingy the problem is that these possibilities don't happen in the earth dimension they are realities that are finished in the realm of the heavens and only executed the earth is a realm of execution the same way your body is the anointing and the grace on your life is what controls the possibilities around you please listen to me his divine power there are doors that have refused to open the doors are not stubborn 
the doors are only obedient to the last instruction and since the anointing speaking to it is not that high the door will remain obedient to the last instruction the day a higher authority speaks that door will open i assure you please don't generalize challenges challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them this is a message of hope for you to hear challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them even the king could not solve the hunger problem of samaria here comes the prophet he did not come to solve the problem he said ah, okay i see that there is a situation everyone was hungry except the king and the prophet he said by this time tomorrow then a foolish man said even if god will open the window of heaven how will these things be and he says you will see it but you will not partake of it i believe in the power of god i've seen what the power of god can do stop wasting your time trying to change things physically creation has never been disobedient creation is the most obedient entity you can find the money you are looking for is not disobedient there is an unction that calls it if it's not there it is authorized to leave you creation is obedient when noah was ready to open the ark when he opened the ark there was a grace that came on every animal by themselves the bible never said noah went to the wilderness to chase them animals with no higher intelligence they found their way to the ark if animals can find their way to the ark why should your destiny helper find it difficult to find you why should breakthrough find it difficult to noah just stood there and allowed the grace to walk you rest only when the grace walks let me tell you life is hard when you are walking on your own in this kingdom we don't walk with our hands our hands only help us to receive the grace when it comes you enter your sabbath are you getting what i'm saying now the power of god is the spiritual mechanism responsible the signs and wonders that will happen in this place right now the healings and the miracles and the breakthroughs they will happen according as his divine power acts chapter 10 and verse 38 it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth the information is not that he was anointed look at the extent to which he was anointed with the holy ghost and with power he says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him there are people inside there are people outside there are people standing in such sacrifice waiting for god it will be very wicked to share the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ and tell everybody bye-bye return back with your challenge no i want you to believe god tonight and insist lord whatever will come upon me must come upon me whatever must change must change whatever must grow must grow whatever must die must die when there is no expectation it becomes wrong for god to visit you because one of the things that he gave men seven benefits given to man at creation one of it is the right to choose the will that god gave man is a fundamental right it's not for christians once you are a man you were given the right to choose salvation even at the detriment of your going to hell was left for your choice god will never 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 violate your right to choose i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing i can only advise you choose life i said before you prosperity and poverty i said before you success and failure i said before you spiritual growth and and a low level of spirituality it's up to you to choose i choose life oh, and everything that comes with it i choose speed i choose increase i choose honor i choose dignity i choose open doors i choose open heavens it's a choice and if you're a family man here as for you and your house you can't choose for the whole world but you can choose for your house That the favor of God can rest upon your life tonight. And that within the next one month, 
things will shift in your life in a way and a manner that will surprise you. If you do not believe these things exist, you are not a Christian. A Christian is not just one who is born again. A Christian is one who has submitted to the ideologies of the kingdom as the ultimate value system of your life. Hallelujah. I'd like you to believe God. Don't say I've come for miracle service before. You see, let me tell you the truth. My assignment as a man of God is not to invite you. My assignment as a man of God is to continue to grow in grace. So that the things that would not answer to me in January must answer in June. Otherwise, what is the superiority of growth? If the same thing that did not answer to me three months ago refuses to answer now, I'm only maintaining my spiritual level. I'm not growing. There was a time when some spirits did not answer to the apostles. They went to Jesus asking a question and they said, why couldn't we do this? He said, this kind, there is a technology for taking this one out. See, let me tell you sincerely, there is enough grace to wipe the tears in your eyes. There is enough grace to turn the tables around. The anointing works like money. I've taught you. It can only solve the problems that are lower than it. The anointing does not generically solve every problem. No. No. You have to understand this. It's very important to know. I have, let me just steal 5-10 minutes to explain this. Look at this. This is 1,000 Naira. Look at this. And if I give you this 1,000 Naira, it can buy a bottle of water. Is that true? It can even buy you lunch or dinner, depending on where you eat. But this cannot buy you a car. This cannot pay a child's school fees, but it is still money. So if you want to pay a child's school fees, you need more of the same thing to the level that meets the demand. Every challenge in life has a level of grace attached to it. Not every grace solves every problem. If every grace solves every problem, then it doesn't make sense to grow in grace. Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost again. To what end? It says that you stretch forth your hands and that miracles, signs and wonders be wrought in the name of your Holy Son. There was a dimension of grace requiring a higher level of the anointing. Gehazi carried his rod, the rod of Elisha. And he came and laid it on the dead body. The body did not rise. But when the prophet came, that dead body came back to life. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. I know men of God have prayed for you. They are not fake just because you did not get the result. It is a reflection of the extent and the level of grace. And God grants the privilege of grace. And that's why as men of God, we must continue to grow in grace. So that what we could not solve yesterday, we can now solve tomorrow. That is the proof of growth. Are we together now? We are going to pray tonight. It's going to be a very quick walk in this place. I trust God and I believe that in the name of the Lord, that things will so change in your life, it will surprise you. Please rise up on your feet. Lift your voice and begin to mention specifics. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Rise up on your feet and please pray. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh yeah oh yeah yeah say oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh oh yeah yeah say oh yeah
Father, turn my life around. Turn my life around tonight. Turn my ministry around. Turn my family around. Is someone praying? Turn things around. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to be very fast. I minister by the Spirit. And the goal is for God to solve people's problems and deal with all the issues that are not of God. Praise the Lord. It will be very, very fast. I'm not sure I may have the time to prophesy tonight because I want us to finish very fast. Our time is gone. But let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven. Please don't be used to your situation. If you're a visitor here and you came, come insisting that I did not leave where I left to be here only to return back with stories. Uh-uh. That is not the God that we serve. Are we together? Hallelujah. There are three people. The power of God is coming on outside. Overflow one. Please, I'd like you to bring them out here. Please, let's start very quickly. We're going to pray. Three people. The power of God is coming upon them right now. Three people. The power of God is coming upon them right now. A very strong anointing. Please bring them very quickly and then and then we'll pray. And then we'll pray. When you have them, please bring them very quickly. The Lord is already moving. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I want you to believe, believe that God will step in and turn your life around. Hallelujah. Turn your life around. From the back right to the center i'm seeing the power of god come on someone now from the back right to the center from the back right to the center please bring them out right now now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there is liberty an end comes to every oppression an end comes to every oppression. An end comes to every oppression. An angel of the Lord is still standing here. I'm still seeing this road. Right now it's like smoke. Just moving across. Right now from the top to the back. Please bring them out. An end comes. God is stepping in to locate people by his spirit remember the bible says now the lord is that spirit and it says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty i command every oppression of darkness i want to pray now i see fire in this place this is what i'm saying by the spirit of the and listen at the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. That every spirit that is other than the spirit of the Christ, responsible for any challenge and any predicament, it must let you go now. Inside and outside, online. Are you ready? Father, let there be deliverance right now. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Jesus. I cause every power, bring them out right now. Every oppression of darkness, it must go now. It must go now. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Yahweh. Oh yeah, yeah, say. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Please bring them out quickly. I'm still praying. The Lord is showing me a vision of a padlock in the spirit. 
I'm seeing a padlock and I'm seeing what looks like a key about to open it at the count of three again you're going to shout that name I see opening opening doors that have been closed are you ready now one two three be open now every closed door be open now be open now be open now close doors over families close doors over ministries close doors over destinies i decree and declare be open be open now bring them out please be open now be open now in the name of jesus overflow one two three across the road online be free now hallelujah i'm seeing i'm seeing like stones in a vision one two three four five and i'm seeing like a strange fire these are representations of altars listen there are families that have been covenanted to all kinds of ordinances fire is about to come from heaven right now in the name of jesus you are ready to shout now father every family here that is under any kind of ordinance i come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood at the count of three let fire from heaven liberate that family right now one two three be free right now be free right now be free right now in the name of jesus we blot out handwritings we blot out handwritings bring them out i cause altars yokes of darkness ordinances speaking against the people of god oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh. Hey. Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah 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 Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God go to the eastern states the eastern state right now God is bringing deliverance the east Abia Anambra state Enugu state Eboi state I'm seeing an anointing right now rest on people within that state let there be liberty right now let there be liberty right now you belong to that state the power of god is coming upon you right now right now even the lawful captives shall be delivered it's a sign and a wonder how god does it i'm seeing the map the east god is bringing liberty hallelujah the lord is showing me the map again i'm seeing an arrow and i'm seeing it Go to Benway, Benway State. Right now, I stretch my hands. Benway, Benway. That anointing, you are from that state. Any ordinance tying your destiny must let you go right now. Must let you go right now. This is by the authority of the kingdom. Benway State. Benway State. Liberation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. release their destinies right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah
I'm seeing fire just within this circumference in front. There are two families God wants to set free right now within this circumference. I'm seeing fire coming upon them right now. Bring them out right now by the spirit of grace. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Things must change in your life. My friend, this young man, lift your hands where you are. There is oil being poured on your head right now. Right now in the name of Jesus, the Lord is removing something that looks like an arrow from your head. Let it go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let him go now. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Fire is still falling here. I'm seeing this deliverance is especially for women. An entity comes to molest you in the night. You go to bed and a strange spirit just comes. Right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord is asking me to just count two. And at the count of two, that fire is coming on people right now. One, two, let that fire come now. Liberation from ordinances of darkness. Every stranger that comes to manipulate your destiny, be free now. All those in front here, I decree the power that holds you. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, let them go now. One, two, three, go. Leave them now. Release their destinies right now. Let there be restoration. Everything that has been stolen from hell, I command the restoration by the spirit of the living God, by the spirit of grace. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Be free right now. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Everything that must leave your life, insist it must leave your life now. The angel of the Lord is removing arrows i'm seeing arrows arrows coming out of people that's what i'm seeing arrows 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 right now right here arrows arrows go now arrows are being removed out of people in the name of jesus madam be free right now be set free now the Lord is setting someone free here right now. Someone in this row. I'm seeing fire just resting on someone. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, everything that has held you bound, be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, those outside keep praying. Something is resting upon you right now. The Lord asked me to come to overflow one. I want to pray for you. There is an anointing right now. I stretch my hands, fire from the front to the back. Everyone under any kind of yoke right now as I'm passing, be free. Be free, help them please. Out now, release their destinies. Release their destinies now. Please help them. Whether you are an usher or not, help them. That yoke must let you go now. That yoke must let you go now. I'm passing this road right now. Once I pass you, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is taking everything that is not of God. Release them now. Release their destinies now. Release their destinies now. Let that fire rest upon you right now. Everything that has refused to open. Be open now. Be open now. 
be open now be open now close doors be open now be open now now listen overflow two i may not touch you but in the name of jesus i pass your robe except god is not god if there is anything sitting on your destiny it must let you go right now be free be free i bring you the anointing of the holy ghost be free now open up your gates your gates gates be open destiny be open now be open in the name of jesus be open now in the name of jesus be open in the name of jesus be open in the name of jesus fire is resting on this road just right there i'm seeing someone the oppression of your family is coming to an end right now i stand by this grace please anyone here anything that is not of god sitting on your destiny right now at the count of three all of you just i'm seeing fire right now and i'm seeing chains broken from people's legs right now be be set free now be set free now be set free now be set free now there is a lady here god is saying it is over right now i'm seeing an anointing liberating a lady's family right now help them please whether you are an usher or not please if anybody is falling close to you so they don't injure themselves hallelujah please shift that lady be free now i'm pointing my hands to her i command that devil to leave your family and your destiny now in the name of jesus christ begin to pray begin to pray overflow three pray pray overflow three something is about to release your destiny now something is about to release your destiny now something is about to release your destiny now overflow three i came with an anointing at the count of three shout jesus fire is falling from the top to the bottom one two three go 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 now every yoke every altar be free now bring them out whether you are an usher or not bring them out every oppression of darkness right to the back i declare by the anointing of the holy spirit be free now be free now bring them out I'm seeing all kinds of spirits. I command every spirit that is not of the Christ. Release God's people right now. At the count of three. I'm seeing fire resting on people. And I'm seeing a number 41. 41 people. At the count of three, shout Jesus. Are you ready? One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Right now, be free by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be free right now every door that has refused to open i open that door right now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there are 27 people here the grace for speed is coming upon them I don't know who you are but right now the grace for speed i stand by the anointing from the front to the back right now in the name of jesus receive that anointing right now speed i release speed over your life over your destiny receive speed in the name of jesus speed in the name of Je hallelujah overflow three hear me there are people here the Lord is telling me no one rises in your family when they get to a level something brings them bow and the Lord is saying I should shift you by prophecy I stand right now I don't know where they are but the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you right now in the name of Jesus I'm seeing the number 17 Lord I don't know where they are here but in the name of Jesus 
I declare move to the next level right now I shift you to the next level right now I shift you to the next level right now hallelujah I'm looking at 14 people here you have the call of God upon your life and right now the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to locate you 14 people Lord where are they I stretch my hands right now apostles prophets evangelists pastors Deborahs, Lord, where are they? Let that man to locate you now. The call of destiny that is upon you, oh prophet of God, may that fire find you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are 15 people here, overflow three. The spirit of revelation is coming on you. Unusual insight. I don't know where they are. But right now I'm seeing light. Not fire. Light. Light coming on people. 15 people. Step into a new dimension of the revelatory grace. Right now in the name of Jesus. Yahweh. Yahweh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Main auditorium, please lift your hands. Main auditorium, lift your hands. I'm seeing seven people. Main auditorium, lift your hands. I'm seeing seven people. The grace for speed. I'll pray it on everybody. But the main auditorium, there is a grace for unusual speed on seven people. They will begin to run by the anointing right now. Please hold them so they don't injure themselves. Main auditorium, I stretch my hands. At the count of three, like Elijah, may that grace come. One, two, three. Receive that grace right now. In the main auditorium, step into the anointing for speed. In the name of Jesus. Overflow three, lift your hands. Every door that has refused to open over your ministry, over your life, held down by witchcraft, in the name that is above all names at the count of three I'm seeing doors open in the spirit one two three let that door be open now be open now be open now the Lord wants to avert death over a family this year alone between last year and this year four people have died in your family four people have died and in the name of Jesus Christ an anointing is coming upon you right now let death be averted now in the name of Jesus now listen all of you at overflow three and the extension there whatever must live your life as I'm passing this place, please, I, I'm releasing my faith. Open your mouth now and declare, Lord, it must live my life now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Pray, please. All those in front here, the spirit that ties your destiny, I command at the count of three, let them go now. One, two, three, go, 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 go. Out of their lives. Out of their destinies. make sure you are praying make sure you are praying the power of God is resting on someone here there's an anointing coming on someone right here in the name of Jesus there's an anointing coming on someone here and the Lord is saying it comes to an end that family crisis comes to an end the power of God is resting on someone by my left here right now receive that anointing let it go in Jesus name Be free right now in Jesus name the power of God is resting on someone here right here I'm seeing an anointing 
right now is a prophetic grace there's someone here a prophetic grace is coming upon you right now by my left here in the name of Jesus drink of that anointing drink of that fountain may that grace rest upon your life right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus the Lord says it is over over right now by the power of the Holy Spirit look at me my friend the Lord is taking you to a height and a dimension in the spirit I lay my hands on you drink of that grace in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I'm seeing what looks like smoke just this region where I'm where you're looking at me right now there are four people I'm seeing the power of God like a wind just coming on them just this road right now Lord where are they I stretch my hands right now right now the power of the Holy Ghost is coming on those people and the Lord is saying it is over he's taking away captivity four of you by the spirit of grace let it be over right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus there is a family here marriage does not happen in that family but I'm seeing fire rest right now the embargo is being broken now the embargo is being broken whoever those people are an anointing is coming on you now for the sake of your family that yoke of marital delay is breaking right now is breaking right now in the name of Jesus please lift your voice and pray everybody pray in the spirit pray in the spirit there is one of you among those standing here there is a call of God upon your life an anointing is coming upon you you will be mightily used by God where is that person spirit of the living God the hand of God just near the gate here the power of God is coming upon that person right now a new dimension in the spirit the eyes that see and the ears that hear may you step into that level in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ my friend touch this gentleman for me lift your hands I stretch my hands over you I command I'm seeing chains all over your body I command those chains to give way now in the name of Jesus release him now let him go now by the power of the Holy Ghost I cut those chains I'm seeing chains from your head to your toe let me pray for those here please all of you are here I'm, the Lord is opening my eyes and from here to the fence I'm seeing snakes and I'm seeing five people there is a major deliverance that is coming for a family right now in the name of Jesus may the anointing of the Holy Spirit locate those ones now five of you right now these spirits my God my God I'm seeing something living right now release them now release no matter how long release them now it is written that even the lawful captive shall be delivered I declare emancipation now by the spirit of the living God oh. where are you coming from huh? you are a gala I want to pray for you are you alone if you came here alone what do you do I want to pray for you the spirit of death is upon you and the Lord is saying I should pray for you so that those dreams you used to have seeing dead people is that true you have dreams and Too much, yes. the Lord is saying that you are going to be free from it right now I declare in the name of Jesus by the power of the hope in the there is there is someone here Hi. academic delay over your family is breaking right now I just please don't be carried away acting this thing I passionately to help people experience God I'm praying I don't know where that family is but now scattered in this congregation I stretch my hands let the anointing of the Holy Spirit family right now I'm seeing a family here none of you has a job none of you there are even a few graduates but nobody at all it's like the doors of jobs don't open right now you're going to sense fire come up your hands real physical fire and the Lord is saying by that help them by that that embargo is broken Lord I I declare right now let the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest upon those people and bring emancipation everyone lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit please begin to pray in the spirit don't say you are not inside God can locate you from any direction
God can locate you from any direction. Bring me this lady, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, delay ends in your life. I stretch my hands and I pray. Delay, help her. The Lord is taking away witchcraft from this family. I command that devil, go now. See, it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. Just release your faith. In the name of Jesus, be free right now. Be free right now. My friend, the call of God is upon your life. There is, that is coming upon you. It's a healing anointing. I stretch my hands. May that grace begin to work effectually. Now, step into that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Among all of you from here to here, the grace for speed is coming on two people. Listen. Those two people will start running now. Please hold them. Hold them so they don't enjoy themselves. That anointing right now. All across. Two you can't control yourself. Hold them, please. Whether you're an usher or I release that grace. Speed. Two people. Strange speed. God is ending delay right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing two of you. A prophetic anointing. You are not prophets. But you have been desiring this grace. The grace to see from here right to where that lady with the veil is. I don't know where they are but I stretch my hands. May that anointing find you right now. Accuracy of sight. Help them. Help them please. Help them please. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. An angel of the Lord is taking away reproach. There is a family here. The Lord is saying the captivity ends now. An anointing is coming upon you right now. It's now. In the name of Jesus. Someone here, is it your sister has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb? Who is that? Listen, where, where is she? At home. Yes. Uh, uh, what of you? Come. How long? Who has had three miscarriages? She did. Three miscarriages. Go and tell her she will have a baby girl. That the Lord is giving her a baby girl. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you both. In the name of Jesus, let it come to an end right now. Let that captivity come to an end. In the name of Jesus, there's someone here, your family has a court case. Who is that, please? Court case. Don't make sure you don't tell us, please. They want to kill you because of what? What did you do? What did you do? Hold on, I have to. Where are you from? Where is that? I have to pray for you. You have bad friends. Hold on. Let me talk to you. Eh? You have very bad friends. Bad friends. You need to be delivered. This is not even your whole life. Eh? You know what I'm saying, right? You need to repent. Eh? Listen. When I make an altar call, run and come. Because the real salvation is you. It's not the issue of court case of this. You, you have friends that are criminals. And we have to pray. You hear what I'm saying? God is locating you to help you. Listen, let me tell you, my dear people, I mean, when God locates us like this, is because he wants to help There's somebody here. Your name is Sarah. Where is that person? Sarah. Hold on, please. Don't, don't. Let me just prophesy. I, I, my heart is full. God wants to visit people. Stand up. Who is Sarah? Where are you from? Huh? Where are you from? No, no, we're state of origin. I want to pray for you. Who is Godia? Yeah. Godia. The Lord wants to visit you right now. Acting God truly wants to change your life. Yeah? I want to pray for you. 
whose mother is in the hospital i'm seeing someone's mother lying down in the hospital here your mom come i'm seeing that down in portacot but uh, yes i portacot you came from portacot go on i'm going to pray for, do i know you i've never seen you i want to pray for you god is turning your situation up. Is as you're standing, let your heart be open. Your people may be far. Don't ever think I'm just because I come outside like this to encourage you to let you know that you must not make it inside. You win. Are we together? The power of God is going to come upon you. A loud shout that will be personal prophesy to right now in just those outside here. It's not something you can stand. This is a sign and a wonder from the Spirit of God. That's not the shout. The shout is coming. It's a loud shout. Please bring the person when that happens. That's the shout. Bring the person. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, lift your hands. Jesus, come. Do you what are you doing? What do you do? Of God, your own church. You are assisting someone. You came here not just to receive a miracle for your mother, but you came to take fire. Stand up. Why you came? Listen to me. You are going to go back and you will step into a dimension signs and wonders that will surprise you. Sarah, in the name that is above all names, every oppression over your family, I come against it right now. I'm still hearing that name, Godia. Who is that? Hold on, please. Hold on. Where are you from? Huh? You are from Kat Saminaka. Hold on, please. Your sister. Blood sister. Same father, same mother. You've been praying for God to locate you. It's okay. You. Hi. The spirit of death is over your family. Huh? That's what I'm saying. I'm seeing you dreaming and dreaming of dead people. They will come and they are calling you. Sometimes they are saying you should eat together. This is the spirit of death coming on the family. But in the name of Jesus, I use them as a point of contact. If there is anybody under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is coming upon you, help her. I caught spirit now. Name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a family. Money does not stay in your house. No matter what happens. Once resources enter. You love God. But resources. Something must happen. Either sickness. Or they will steal it. Or something will come up. I'm seeing what looks like a blue flame. And it's resting on at least five people. And the Lord is saying an end comes to financial hardship. Father, where are they? Right now, I stretch my hands. Let that anointing locate you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and begin to pray. My friend, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. An end comes now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and pray in the spirit, everyone. My dear, look at me. I command that spirit to leave you now of darkness must let you go in Jesus name lift your voice and pray everyone please pray pray in the spirit pray in the spirit please pray in the spirit pray in the spirit everyone madam help this woman so that she doesn't fall with it I command everything that is not of God to let you go now release this woman's destiny now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus oppression leaves right now someone here there is a spirit that has oppressed your family it must go now i command that devil of darkness help her please that spirit must leave now in the name of jesus please everyone pray in the spirit everyone pray in the spirit god is visiting us right now one media person here there is an anointing resting on someone the lord is bringing to end the captivity on your family i'm seeing it by the spirit of god captivity coming to an end 
in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus let it end now by the Spirit of the Living God let it end now in the name of Jesus my friend I'm seeing what what looks like a towel on you and the Lord is wiping away infirmity in the name of Jesus infirmity let it go right now please make sure you are praying in the name of Jesus the son of the living God the spirit of death there is a family here that spirit must go now the spirit of death release them now in the name of Jesus release them now release them now the spirit of death there will be no obituary I command that devil to go now madam excuse me madam look at me come are you a man of God come you too please come I don't know you where are you coming from sir where do you, what do you have to do with Adamawa is it Anambra huh? who is from Anambra me from Anambra state you came all the way Ah, there is a grace to see that God is going to be delivering to you number two there is speed in ministry that God I don't know you sir I've not seen you you're, you're together you're a man of God too you're a man of God you're a ministry can I pray for you sir because I'm seeing this anointing strange anointing come on you you will go back and it's going to be fire all the way father in the name of Jesus I pray for this man of God step into that grace in the name of Jesus the anointing of the Holy Spirit you will never be the same can I pray for you sir by the anointing of the Holy Ghost drink of this wine you will never be the same in the name of Jesus the Son of the Living God mommy let me pray for you hold on please please stand up stand up who is Jennifer 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 the Lord is visiting the Jennifer I'm seeing you are outside you are holding a child Jennifer Jennifer is there someone like that oh please oh, confirm I what's your name they always confirm before you allow Jennifer, them sir. Jennifer is this your child yes sir where are you coming from from this is my state huh from GRA no, no, where, where you coming? Kaduna State. Kaduna State. Yes. I want to pray for you. So that the spirit that makes marriages to not work in your family will not catch up with you. Does Amen. it make sense what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Well, huh? this boy has a great destiny. Forget about whatever it is that has happened or not happened. I want to pray for you. The Lord located you to bless you. What's his name? Fortune. 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 Yes, I will pray for you. Mama? Where are you coming from? I come from Togo. You came from Togo? Yes, just yesterday. Just yesterday? Yes. What are you trusting God for? Ah, my daughter in America. She's the one that sent me to you. She has been seeing you in her dream. You have done so many things for her in the dream. Then she said that I must come. So that to me, you will not get her. She's asking for contract. That is contract that she's seeking for. She... Just calm down, madam. You came all the way from Togo. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what God will do in your life. First, not even just your daughter. Eh? Leave your daughter's issue. God is going to bring your daughter, but it's you. First, that back pain. Eh? That back pain that you have. You get up in the morning and there's severe back pain. That back pain will leave you now. That's number one. Number two, the dead people you see in your dream. Eh? Sometimes you go to bed and you see dead people, people who have died. But they are alive talking to you. Jesus. I need to pray for you. And then number three, God is going to visit your daughter. Tell her the month of August is a month of breakthrough. Amen. In the name of Jesus, be free right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here, please? Sir? You are a teacher. Did you apply for a job? Yes. Where? because I'm seeing a letter and I'm seeing congratulations it, hold on ah you are a teacher yes, where with uh, KHMS what is Dambo International 
it's a school. Did you apply there? Yes. Like I'm seeing that they are going to give you a job. Huh? I will pray for you, sir. Because this teaching you are doing is only for a while. There is a grace of entrepreneurship upon you. And that grace is going to come and God will shift you to a dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. How many children do you have? One. Just one. Yes, sir. I have one outside. No. Hold on. Don't be embarrassed, eh? I'm seeing one child, then the vision changes, and I'm seeing two again. Huh? You have one, you have two. What is the mystery? Explain. Before I married her, I have a son outside. Okay, before you married her, you have a child. The, yes, sir. Okay, I want to pray. Don't, don't make sure you treat the child with honor and grace. All the children that came out from you are great children. You understand? Please don't fight that child, eh? Madam, you hear what I'm telling you? Yes. I know that we live in a, a society that sometimes all kinds of troubles can come, but may God grant you the grace to manage things well. Sir, there is a grace of wealth that is upon you. Please look at me. It looks like you are a teacher, but your destiny is not a teacher. You are a real kingdom financier. And there is a grace for finances that should come upon you. Please look at me. You see this woman? She's a good woman. Don't ever let the devil use the face of any devil and use her face to make it look as if this is an evil woman. And don't let any prophet anywhere tell you this woman is a witch. In the name of Jesus, I tell you, God gave you a good woman. She's a good woman. Madam, you are a good woman. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for you, sir. Please hold my hands. In the name that is above all names, I open up every closed door over your life and destiny. I shift you to that realm of wealth in Jesus' name. The person, look up please. The person who comes to molest you when you sleep, it comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus, every fraternity with darkness is gone now and gone forever. In the name of Jesus. I don't know why, why are they here. Who is Sarah? Are you married? We are not more together. Huh? I have two children, but we are not together with you. You are father. not together with your husband? Yes. Were you married? No. This is what I'm saying. Come. You need to be delivered, eh? If not, I'm seeing four children. You will add two more, and yet you are not married. I'm not, I hope you are not feeling bad. I hope you are not embarrassed. God reveals so that he can redeem her. Eh? You are not a bad woman. You are not an immoral woman. It's a spirit. You hear what I'm saying? Come, let me pray for you. Aye. The power of God is coming on one of you here. One of you standing here now. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on one right now. It's not something you can resist. I'm, this, I'm seeing it in the spirit that the power of God is going to come upon one of you. And when that happens, then I'm going to prophesy to that one person. Right now, it's an anointing from heaven that is coming upon one of you here. And the Lord is saying that he's taking away sickness from the midst of you. Taking away sickness. My dear, in the name of Jesus, is it the same man that has the children? Yes. Huh? Yes. Why doesn't he want to marry you? He didn't pay for my dowry. He didn't pay for your dowry? Yes. Go and tell him that I said he should pay for your dowry. Huh? Dowry is not building project. He should pay for your dowry and give these children a chance. Please. At this level, it's no longer about their comfort. The children need a father. May God grant him grace and give him money to pay your dowry and be a good man in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing written in the air, polygamy. God is breaking that spirit now. No, no, no. Just please, just keep quiet. I'm ministering. There is a spirit of polygamy. Everybody in that family, you can't do with one man alone or one woman alone. That anointing is locating people right now to break the spirit. It's a covenant. It's not a desire. Coincidences continue to put themselves together to lead people to trouble. Right now, that spirit, please help them. In the name of Jesus, inside, outside, everywhere, the spirit of polygamy is being broken right now. The spirit of polygamy is being broken right now. Sir, let me pray for you. Where are you coming from, sir? 
Port Harcourt, what do you do? Do business. You do business. But things are not going well. Huh? If I don't pray for you, I'm seeing you in the court because of money, debt. Huh? I hope you're not embarrassed. You came here so that I pray for you. What are you trusting God for? I'm trusting God for breakthrough in my business. Breakthrough in your business. First, your... My wife um, has listened to your tape for about seven days now and the last dream she had, you came to pray for her. And she insisted that you come through the night today. I will pray for you. More than business breakthrough, sir, is your relationship with God. Do you understand? Please don't be embarrassed, but your relationship with God. In this kingdom, we prosper as our souls prosper, not at the detriment of our soul. So that there's, there's too much spiritual distraction around your life. I pray that God will cause your heart to love him more than money in the name of Jesus. And that in so doing, he will bless you and lift you. I decree and declare, I don't know why all of you came, but in the name of Jesus, I declare that everything that is not of God leaves you right now. Where is this lady from? Come, where are you from? I'm from Nesara Ostage. You are from where? Nesara. How many are you? I'm from extended family. We are many. Plenty. You are plenty. Yes. You don't know how many. Yes, but oh. in my mother's side, we are eight. Two have gone. We are six now. Are you married? No. The man coming around your life, I drive him from your life now and forever. Amen. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. The man that I'm seeing, I drive him in the name of Jesus, the son Amen. of the living God. He will go back and you'll be surprised. He will tell you there's no time. He cannot call you. He's busy. Just know that God drove him from your life to save you from trouble. Are you ready for a child now? So you have to be careful. Huh? I send him again in the name of Jesus Christ before he destroys your innocent life. What do you do? I'm Lenny Salon. Huh? I'm Lenny Salon. You are, I'm not here. I'm Lenny Salon. Hairdressing. Yes, sir. I'll have to pray for you. Come. Huh? I place favor on your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray for the sick shortly, but the Lord is showing me a very serious vision. I'm looking at people, but I'm not seeing a face. And this is not the first time I see this kind of vision. The moment I see this kind of things is a sign that you know the devil has just tried to tarnish the glory of people the bible says to not let your good be evil spoken of there there is a way that you are good but it's like people continue to misunderstand you right now in the name of jesus i stretch my hands i'm seeing an anointing coming on those people that veil that covers your face always putting you in trouble I tear off that veil now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. We have to be fast. Now please listen very carefully. God is touching everyone. Every single one under the sound of my voice. Three things will happen right now. Number one, make sure you are here with your prayer request. If you're not here with it, please pen down. It's an act of faith very quickly. What you're trusting God for, lift it up. Let the ushers have it. Number two, we're going to minister to the sick right now. We'll do it very, very fast. And then I'll pray on it and we'll prophesy. Open doors for everyone. We have to make this very, very fast. Are we together? While you're doing that, please be praying in the spirit. There are people here who are trusting God for themselves and their families. Please listen. Let's listen outside, inside. Let's listen to the instruction. Please. All those who are standing, trusting God for fruit of the womb, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, I want to pray for you myself. Are we together? Particularly for those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Um, but then aside from that, um, overflow one, please listen. Listen. From the start of overflow two, that means the end of CGC, and inside here that's overflow two um overflow three is from the end of cgc down to second equa okay you are overflow two b let's call it two b are we together then the overflow from the beginning of this fence down right down there we'll call you overflow two c please listen then there's overflow three i don't know if you understand what i'm saying this is the main auditorium 
this is overflow one this is overflow two then from this place down to second equa is overflow two b from that same place down is overflow two c so that so that you would know if you are trusting god no matter what overflow for the fruit of the womb i'll pray for you but then all who are in here overflow one i mean overflow here please you're trusting god for healing come stand here overflow one come and stand in front of your projector stand overflow two stand in front of your projector stand overflow 2a please create a space for them there overflow 2a create a space for them there and then overflow 2c stand in front of your projector stand and then overflow 3 you can stand in um, in front of your projector stand those online connect by faith and then we'll pray we'll pray with you we are going to do this very fast we thank god there are many hands today and while they minister to you i would like you to believe god for a miracle you are a man of god you are a ministry here open up your heart and connect you are trusting god for the grace for signs wonders make sure that you connect the worship team will be leading us through powerful sessions of worship while we do that and concurrently while that is happening please make sure you submit your prayer request everyone make sure you pen down your prayer request and then we are going to pray on it and let the god of heaven visit us right now in the name of jesus praise the lord um ejimi and promise and bishop manasseh ejimi and promise and bishop manasseh will do overflow three there are quite a number of people there overflow three um benga will do overflow two overflow two pastor alpha and Ima, you do overflow one. Um, overflow one. We need a way of reaching overflow. Kenny. Kenny will do overflow 2B. Overflow 2B. We'll do overflow 2B. And then Isaac. Isaac in media. You do overflow 2C. Let's make it that way. Praise the Lord. Father, we stand under this corporate grace and we decree and declare in the name of Jesus that as we minister to everyone across, let your healing power touch, deliver, set free in the name of Jesus. Do this and be glorified even by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please, we'll do it very, very fast. And while you are seated, make sure you are agreeing, releasing your faith in the name of Jesus. Madam, you lift lift your hands you this woman no the one wearing blue and white yes lift your hand i'm seeing oil coming on your head and the lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's lifting you this is what i'm seeing an anointing is coming on you right now and the lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's bringing an oil of gladness upon your life in the name of jesus father let there be miracles signs wonders in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's stretch your hands to the prayer request. Begin to pray in the spirit. Lord, you are the God that answers prayers. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Pray over these requests. Is that these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. There is a covenant of answered prayer in this place. Lift your voice and pray. Father, I decree and I declare. I prophesy, I proclaim by the spirit of grace. That this is a representation of the pain of people. A representation of their hunger. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. Are you praying? Decree and declare that everything written here in the name of jesus will become a testimony everything written here we invoke the power of the holy ghost upon every request here supernatural deliveries terminations of delay open doors new spiritual dimensions in the name of jesus admissions graduations jobs 
marriages, children, restoration, advancement, promotion. In the name that is above all names, we decree and declare. Make sure you are praying. Make your declaration. These that are brought before the God of all flesh will never, never, never return as a disappointment. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Those online joining us from all over the world, connect in the name of Jesus. From America to Asia, the UK, Canada, everywhere, we decree and declare that your requests are turned into testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen, I want you to understand that this is not a ritual. This is a mystery. Are we together now? There are all kinds of testimonies that have come. I can prophesy and there is so much. I can be limited. I cannot discern everybody's expectation. But this is a representation of your hunger. It's a representation of your tears. And let me tell you this. Please don't get familiar with this. This is not some... some spiritual thing just for the fun of it there is power in what we're doing it's guided by understanding is guided by an anointing and god has a covenant is protected by his jealousy in the name of jesus paul said for this cause i paul bow my knees before the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you in the name of jesus i declare upon you that the egyptians you see today that you will see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus. Every request here that is a death sentence. Cancer, HIV, and any kind of incurable disease. We turn it around right now in the name of Jesus. Every impossible situation represented here. May the God of wonders arise tonight in the name of Jesus and do wonders. By the power of the Holy Ghost. For those of you who have submitted these requests on behalf of your loved ones, I declare, may the angel of God's presence, these angels that do not know time and distance, may they go to your various homes and to your loved ones and birth supernatural solutions in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare that you remain above this challenge forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare over your life, we're entering the second half of the year. It says, revive thy work, O God, in the midst of the year. I decree and declare every spiritual weariness, every prayerlessness, it dies right now in the name of Jesus. passion for the things of the spirit like never before hunger for spiritual things in the name of Jesus I declare prayer fire like never before let it rest upon your life now I decree and declare an appetite for God and the things of God I declare you receive it right now I pray over your life every long-standing issue you have prayed you have fasted you have sought counsel it has refused to change in the name that is above all names i decree and declare by this time next month return with your testimony by this time next month return with your testimony please believe it don't just shout amen believe it I come against patterns. You have seen it in others. You saw it in your father. You saw it in your loved ones. You saw it in your siblings. Now it's beginning to happen. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I cancel every pattern now. I cancel every pattern now. It works for everybody until it gets to your turn. Then something happens. You will see it, but you never possess it. I declare right now, that spirit that makes you to see things and never step into it is caused by the God of heaven. Caused by the God of heaven. Everything that 
was given to you in the realm of the spirit already i declare by the power that raised christ from the dead this month coming it must enter your hands i declare that it must enter your hands there are families where is the women that feed the men have you seen such families no matter how hard working the men are they never feed the family they get up in the morning and play draft from morning till night while the women go to fend it's an anomaly i declare by the spirit of god i'm praying for the men now the grace for establishment and the grace to be satisfied early receive that anointing right now it says satisfy me early i'm saying it again everybody here who is a man and it looks like the devil wants you to depend on people for the rest of your life i decree and declare like jacob laban must let you go in the name of jesus I pray for every Mordecai here. You have been good to others. You have been good to kings. Your records have been written, but you have not been rewarded. In this season, by the Spirit of God, we open a book of remembrance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Anyone here called jobless by the God of heaven, between now and the next three months, like the ark of God in the house of Oben Edom, I decree and declare jobs that will be consolations to your years of pain. May my God give it to you. Every dying business, hear the word of the Lord. I don't care what has happened by the spirit that raised Christ from the dead. I speak to you come back to life now come back to life now everyone who is in ministry here no matter what level there are dimensions I pray for you you will go back to your various churches fellowships and assemblies and a dimension of fire a dimension of insight you have never seen receive in the name of Jesus everyone here called barren by the god of heaven in the name of jesus according to the time of life return with your children these are not empty prophecies believe them they are backed up by the jealousy of god they will come to pass in the name of jesus i don't know where the helpers of your destiny are but in the name of jesus every man who must arise in this season for your sake to favor you wherever they are around this globe by the spirit of grace i call them to your life now i call them to your life now the bible says that strangers shall feed your flock it says your gates shall be open continually it shall not be shut day nor night that you will receive the forces of the gentiles people you do not know i compel them to be interested in your lifting in the name of jesus christ i prayed a prayer like this one time and one of us god just opened a door and a bank met him to sell a property for them worth 450 million naira listen it doesn't take time it doesn't take time there is the creative dimension of prophecy that can order things in your life every area of struggle i stand by the god of heaven who is called ebenezer the god of jeshuron in the name of jesus receive help from the lord
I want to pray for people who have ideas and have projects but it seems to never go out of the book you have ideas you have projects is just to connect you with somebody who has the interest nobody helps you on their own they are called by prophecy in the name of Jesus right now I connect your ideas to your helpers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I forgot to pray for those who are in various institutions writing their exams I know that many people had started their exams some have written and the honest truth is that some of you have written nonsense you need the mercy of God in the name that is above all names much more than what you have written in the name of Jesus may the mercy of God show up in your exam there is a dimension of finances that comes by prophecy please pay attention our time is gone but I want to speak this into your life there are people who are not very smart the prophetic dimension is not a license to not be valuable the prophetic dimension is a system of advantage to bridge tragedy while you learn it's a system of God's mercy it will be foolish to believe that wealth is only by principles there are laws and there are irrefutable principles that make for the foundation but there is the ordinance of prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God the God who has helped me by his grace the God who has helped this ministry I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit between now and the end of July may your finances turn around in a way that will surprise you may your finances turn around in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are under any kind of project building project whatever it is the hand that started that project is the same hand that must finish that project in the name of Jesus Christ everyone here due for promotion what has been kept because of the wickedness and the sentiments of men go back into your next level in the mighty name of Jesus Christ finally I want to pray for you honor is the ability to discern to celebrate and to reward a man for his uniqueness it's not enough for your value to be discerned you must live a rewarded life you will be frustrated if you do not live a rewarded life I pray for you the eyes that can perceive and can discern your value I connect you to those eyes in the name of Jesus any pit you have found yourself in I must pray this financially whatever it is you have found yourself in a situation where only God can bring you out may that God you believe in bring you out of it now in the name of Jesus finally I want to prophesy again the grace for this year's prophetic word the Lord declared that it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Every part of that prophecy that is yet to speak in your life, by the force of right words and by the power of the, no, the name that is above all names, I declare to you, may your life experience extraordinary fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ may you return with testimonies some of you this night before you get to your homes your phones you will see text messages that are full of wonders in the name of Jesus Christ 
Father, we give you all the praise. We bless you because you have honored this house. You have made it a place of answers. You have made it a place of strange testimonies. Let everything that you have done tonight by your spirit return as testimonies. Let it not just be a ceremony. In the name of Jesus, we declare by the spirit of the Christ, testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, very quickly, I will make an altar call and then we'll take a few very important announcements and we're done. I apologize, our time is gone. You are here in this place. Please, let's minimize movement, especially outside. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've not given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to encounter his salvation and his mercy. Please listen. Or you are here, you are saying, Man of God, I've seen the wonders I once gave my heart to the Lord, but as it is right now, I need mercy, I need grace. I need to start afresh. You are here, inside, overflow, one, two, three, and all the other annexes. I want to give you five minutes. You want to make it right with Jesus wherever you are. I want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand right here. It will be my joy to lead you to Jesus Christ. Don't wait for someone, be the first. I'll count one to five wherever you are. Please start running. Clear the way for them, please. Outside. One. Quickly. Quickly, please. If you're coming, run quickly. Run to Jesus. Two. Win that war today. Win that war today. Win that war today. The Bible says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Three. Someone is still coming. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. Join them very quickly. Join them very quickly. I expect people to come from outside. Please clear the way for those coming from outside. Clear the way for those coming from outside. Overflow. One, two, three. If you're coming, don't be sluggish. Run very quickly. We're out of time. Run quickly. Run quickly. We're out of time. Apostle, I want to come, but... I'm ashamed and afraid of my colleagues and contemporaries. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Give them a big God bless you whilst they come. Takes a lot of courage, but win that war. Young and old, run to Jesus. The Bible says, ye must be born again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to salute all of you. Thank you so much for coming to make this decision. Lift your right hand high to heaven and say this after me. You're not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Jesus is here. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I have seen your wonders and I declare that I need you. This night, I declare that you are my Lord, you are my Savior, you are my King. I receive your life, I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. I am a child of God, I'm changed forever. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, I present to you the ones you died for i thank you because when you hung on that cross they were worth your blood they were worth the tears they were worth the death i pray in the name of jesus according to scripture your sins are forgiven and the grace to walk in victory is released upon you right now in the name of jesus i decree and declare forever you go from glory to glory even by the spirit of god everything that is not of god i come against it right now the grace to live victorious is released upon you. From today, you go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I congratulate you. I salute you very quickly. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. 
and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye